going on everybody welcome back to another riveting episode of the vile files going deeper edition i am your host nick joined by a full household we got uh ally as always you don't like all faithful i don't know any young woman that would <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to be referred to you're like this young old, faithful crusty thing in the midwest <laughs> well, you, you? <laughs> young faithful <laughs> Young this fa- disgusting, I, I will this not- rotten oh, over piece here. of shit. <laughs> I'm not going to be referring to you as young faithful. That doesn't <laughs> articulate the message I'm trying to convey in terms of your uh, long-lasting loyalty to this uh, show. What about most faithful? Most the most faith- fa- faithful, faithful companion. Could- Can I get like right hand? Yeah. <laughs> my right- command. There we go. My right hand woman. My pit bull. I feel like we could do Mother oh. Ali. Oh. Or Sister you- Ali. So- Mother Ali. Now I'm a nun. Now I'm a nun. Anyways, Allie's here. Uh, <laughs> we also have uh, sweet, 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 sweet boy Justin. Leia. Sierra Robinson returns as well. And most important, not, well, I mean, most important. Sorry, guys. Most importantly. We understand. Uh, Natalie Joy is back, uh, not just as the guest of our uh, birth story, which, by the way, was a big hit. And if you haven't listened to it, then you don't have a heart. You don't care you don't about care anything at all. Um, so maybe go back, pause this episode, go back and listen to that. Uh, cry a little bit. Mm-hmm. Happy tears, obviously. No one wants to be sad. And then come back to this episode. Uh, it's great to have you back, Sierra. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. We finally have Sierra and Nally here in one, which is really just a combination that <laughs> we've been waiting for. We love each other. So well, we much. had one, one, one time in Rally Recap. That's you, true. You're, we're, your first Vile Files that's, appearance. But anyways, we're back. We have a lot to get into. Most importantly, we have two very special guests. Uh, Candy Burris, our main attraction today. Woo! Candy, uh, reality TV royalty, as we refer to her, the longest running housewife ever, right? Mm-hmm. Ever? Mm-hmm. Uh, has yeah. since retired from the franchise, we think. Questions we ask her in her interview. Is she done? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but she is with us, and we have uh, a great conversation with Candy, uh, a lot of fun. And Jess returns, and she was with us from Reality Recap, but obviously for spoiler purposes, which we do our best not to reveal here on the show. But obviously, we had a great conversation with Jess on Reality Recap. If you haven't heard that, go check that out. But we also wanted to talk to her about what was it like to actually meet Jimmy face-to-face, which finally, boy, they Love is Brian really milked that. They really waited the last batch of episodes to, to have us wait for what we, all, what we all wanted and to see that. So Jess will be answering those questions a few more. Uh, she offers a few more interesting insights. Yeah, so, but before we get to any of that, what else are we getting into? Lots to talk about. Kristen Cavallari has a new boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He's 24. Congratulations to Kristen Cavallari. He's hot. Love. I get it. He's hot. He's super hot. Yeah, he's stunningly hot. I will say the video that he put on TikTok of the two of them, it like made me giddy inside. Say more. Like, it's just really cute. She looks really happy. Mm. I obviously, you know, she's got three kids. She went through Jay Cutler, which I'm sure that was just a traumatic experience in itself. He seems like it'd be stressful to be in a relationship with him. He seems like he just doesn't listen. He gives all. nothing. Or care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That reality show was painful. He's like, I for played me. football. I loved the reality show. Him I'm on rich. it. <laughs> he was kind of funny. I don't know. For me, I was like, mm, get off. Funny for us, yeah. But yeah. like almost in not As a know, husband, like, might yeah. be hard. Yeah. Might be hard. But he's a bit younger. He's 24. Yeah. She's 37. We love an age gap here at the bottom. Yeah, yeah we, we're, we're not here to yuck that yum. That's <laughs> we for love sure. that yum. <laughs> an appropriate uh, yeah. <laughs> age, appro- a, a, a legal. An a- an, a appro- legal. an appropriate <laughs> age gap. Not like, a make legal. sure with your cute southern accent that you emphasize the space in there. So like, it the sounded a, a lot like a illegal. <laughs> uh, we love an illegal age gap. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. No. We love a legal age gap. Yeah, people also like to... People like to throw out random fucking numbers for her. They're like, no, Nick met her when she was six years old and he was the bachelor. It's like, what? Y'all literally just pulled that out of your asshole. Uh, also, Bradley Cooper and Gigi Hadid's romance seems to be budding. So I don't know. Did we make the age gap thing cool again? 
Or did it ever call it a style? Even if you did, at least you open up doors for Natalie because all I saw in that video of Bradley and Gigi was her touching a lot of handles. Mm. I The photo that I just saw was him opening up a cab. So maybe that was like he got, finally it clicked at the last second when she was leaving. Do you think they were in any way self, like do you think Kristen Cavallari and her boyfriend or Bradley and Gigi were any way self-conscious about their age gaps and they looked to us and said, you know what? They seem happy. Nick and Na- my nipples are taking. Oh. oh, my baby must be crying. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I did put one of my diaper pads in my bra. Okay. Yep. Yeah. In case anyone wanted to know, you can do that. Mm. The Anyways. more you know. The more you know. <laughs> Why not use them for both areas? But, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, Kristen. Kristen and her boyfriend. I think she's just looking to have some fun. And yeah, I'm rooting should. for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. she should. If I, I'm not, but like I'm in a different life. Life. It will, in a life where <laughs> there is no other life. a worse life a much a much worse life but let's say in an alternate universe what i had universe? kids much uni- much earlier than i did now right. but kristen is With she who? has three or four kids uh, some make-believe terrible person <laughs> just the worst person yeah. ever yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. basically the equivalent of jay cutler Per- but okay. Like, in this, okay, got in this alternate universe, this he is alter- no longer with this horrible woman. Yeah, <laughs> Good answer. Hor- a horrible, horrible person. But how many kids did y'all have together? How many does Kristen have? She's three. three. She has three. Like, pop off. Like, I don't think she's. Pro- I'm assuming, and maybe we'll get a chance to talk to Kristen. I believe maybe we may or may not be having Kristen on shortly. Should we ask to have her boyfriend come on too? Yeah, of yeah. course we should. But like, you know, she's date for fun she's not dating for necessarily like hey do you you know i don't even think she even gives a shit if he's interested in being a co-parent or not she seems to be doing just fine raising her kids he could literally say i hate children and she'd be like that's fine yeah, yep uh, sure. that's really good. Never so it's not about that. that great i do not want you around <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, i don't like, think she's looking for the father of her kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's yeah, giving hot boy toy, and I and I support it. And I, she looks amazing, so I'm just like they they look like they're keeping up with each other. Just like one note that Nally did observe. It's the one red flag I've seen so far. Just one. You want to say it? He does have a Snapchat in all of his bios, and it's not even like Snapchat. It's Snap with his username. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So like okay. maybe just I think that was just like an oversight before they hard launched, you know, like yeah. there's a lot of things that have been in my bio for years. I don't even know why they're there, you know, Wait, like taller in person. Yeah, I like, feel like it's not <laughs> feel, Harry Styles like, fan account. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like I was like, like really and I still love Harry Styles, but like, you know, how maybe, does Taylor Swift feel about that? Probably not good. Yeah, so exactly. So he probably it's just probably an oversight. Can I ask, as somebody, the old maid that's been in a relationship for seven years, I don't know, what does Snap mean versus Snapchat? It's like, all the same. It's, it's just same. like a little bit more fuckboyish. Okay. Like, yeah, okay. Snapchat, like putting your Snapchat out is is basically... No, no, no. Snapchat sounds like business, right? It's like what all of these influencers are doing. It's like, here, add me on my Snapchat to follow along yeah. on my journey of, you know, redecorating my house. And Snap sounds like... Snap is like, if you send, send me your me fucking nude. If you, you want to send me a nude, <laughs> this is uh, my Snap. This is my Snap. Yeah, yeah that's and this, the difference. this good looking... Guy has been sent a nude or two a for percent. sure, for unsolicited yeah. first, unsolicited, sure. and he's just like, I don't know what to do about yeah. it. They just send them to me. <laughs> Snap, it, it's like it might as well say send nudes, send nudes. Okay, yeah. now I know. And above <laughs> his Snapchat name is Life is Amazing. It is what it should be, which is a line. It's either him being just a little Pinterest quotey, or <laughs> it's a line from. I think a future song. Life is amazing. Is what it should be. Maybe Drake. I don't know. But it's definitely not amazing. So that's why I think it might be more the rap song. Again. Amazing. <laughs> totally understandable that his bio might be outdated and he just hasn't gotten around to updating I it. I will say the snap is in his bio, but he has a link tree. So you think, the, snap, a link tree. You think the Snapchat would be in the link tree, no, but influencer. it's in his... What else is in his link tree? Like his Amazon storefront? <laughs> Let's see. Skincare. Oh, he has a skincare code. Oh, I like oh, to I know that it. For him. Belmont Anchors, Instagram, and TikTok. So the snap made it to the bio. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. He really wants Nudes are most snap. important. <laughs> Business is yep. second. <laughs> Anyways, we are very, very, very happy for Kristen, and we hope she is getting I everything she, she wants yeah, and more I, from this relationship. Yeah. As do I. He is good to look at, for sure. Yeah. That, is, that is just a fact. Love is not blind there. Dude. That's for sure. And Bradley Cooper and Gigi. Do we, we like that for them? Yeah. No. Who wouldn't? I mean, it's Bradley Cooper. He's 
Also an attractive man. No, I know. <laughs> Love is not blind there either. That's true. Have we seen what he looks like shirtless recently? Or no? I think he's thin. What's he looking like nowadays under those clothing? Yeah, when were these photos taken? Because some, <laughs> he is quite svelte. And others, <laughs> he is not. <laughs> well, as an actor, he you know, you have to... May have some bread, You please. have to change yeah, your body sometimes. he did just come off of that role know? in Maestro. You had to play an old man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, he may be a little weak in the knees. Some people like that. <laughs> oh, I love a Justin, dad bod. You, uh, I'm not saying I do. Oh, I'm uh, just saying, uh, yeah. not yucking the yum. No, of course not. Yeah. My mom showed me her um, what she wants in a man list on her notes app. And it was um, tall, not skinny. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> period. <laughs> body shame them, bitch. Damn. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, okay. And then it was like, wants to dance in the kitchen. Well, and I was like, oh, huh? now we're cute. And then she's like, Nick is all of these things, right? And she goes down the list. And I was like, I don't think he'd dance in the kitchen with me. Sure I would. I yeah. have. I've danced. You dance. Would I dance Alone. with you? Alone. Yeah. <laughs> God, no. Would... <laughs> Ooh, yuck. Dis- disgusting. By myself? Fuck yeah. With you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like in love? No. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Anyways, we're happy for them. We're happy for everyone in love. Did you see that Ariana owes Tom Sandoval ninety thousand dollars? Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So TMZ got new court documents, and he said that he loaned her ninety thousand dollars. She hasn't paid him back, and this affects them selling the house because he has a lien on the house with the loans attached. Tom Sandoval will say whatever he wants at this. That's point. what I'm thinking. Yeah, I was... <laughs> well, it's not entirely impossible I, not that say, yeah. Ariana she kind of said as much on Vanderpump that she's like Tom doesn't deserve. Like my, trust. she's like he won't show me him. proof of this. I've asked stuff, him for yeah. stuff, but she she's essentially admitted to not paying him stuff. Right, but I'm like she, I support. She also uh, didn't she have to take out a loan for him because he or like they they she had a co sign. She something. had to sign something that remortgaged their house so that he could use that money for the bar. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It was in last season. I don't know, but that's why. I'm also like where I'm like, what are we, how are we? Who's the accountant on this? Well, because I asked a realtor when we had Sandoval on and we d- weren't sure what he was saying because he was claiming that he offered to buy her out for $3.1 million, but they had originally purchased it for $2 million. They each put down two hundred fifty k, And the realtor was like, yeah, he's likely just paying her out at the new valuation because like over time the house has like appreciated. Appreciate, yeah. right. And then he said giving her equivalent equity in cash. So do you think these articles are like, oh, I don't owe her actually that extra 90 grand. Let's just subtract that because she owes me that. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. That's what that's giving. But if she hasn't paid the mortgage or any bills, I mean, what, what, regardless of what we think about Tom, like, she might actually owe him money. A thousand percent. Yeah. I'm just like, I hope he has receipts and it's not just like mm-hmm. a, a number we're plucking here. Yeah, like, I support Ariana saying, you know, I'm not going to pay you jack shit until you show me receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> Until you show me everything that's real. You're not just like pulling these numbers. Well, I'm sure that can't be that hard to accumulate all the bills that. Have but that he hasn't owed. been able to do that. That's why she hasn't paid him anything. She's like, Is he that can't. Why? That's what she said on the show. No, no. Well, no. And he also said that he offered her a bunch of money here to buy her out. But then the first episode of the show, he said he was overdrafting his account. So I'm like, where did that money come from? He also said he, he was probably asked like, mommy for some more. You know. <laughs> What did he say? He was making a bunch of money on his Instagram was, or, things. And I was like, still? Well, and then he said, <laughs> he was like, well, no. I was scrounging. People think I was living like a rock star. I was not. <laughs> like uh, He needs to join OnlyFans. At this point. It's the smart move for him. He would I, make so much money. I would sign up out of curiosity. For research purposes. Re- yeah, absolutely research <laughs> his hater, purposes. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. For his, work. He would do so well. Yeah. It would be like Denise Richards. You're just like so curious. Mm-hmm. He would make so much money. And I, why he hasn't signed up for an OnlyFans is beside, I, you know. He sold his soul to worse things. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's not for his, his brand. You know, get a little behind the scenes of those cake tasting photos. I was going to yeah. say, those were OnlyFans those were worthy. Those were OnlyFans worthy. <laughs> right? They like, were. And he gave it away for free. Yeah. Yeah. I just, mm. if you're out there. Sandoval, if you're listening, because I'm sure you listen to this show, OnlyFans. You need to hire Nick as your business manager. It's just, it's such a layup for him. He would make, and he needs to do it now. He needs to do it before the end of this season. And he needs to just be like, you know what? It's time. The moment you've all been waiting for. It was only, it was just a matter of time. 
Here you go. And then in his riches, he can, you know, donate to any, you know, groups of people he's offended over the past <laughs> year or so uh, for goodwill purposes. Wipe that slate clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This could be finally the redemption arc that he's been waiting for. And all he has to do is go sign up for OnlyFans. Riley, his publicist, won't let him. <laughs> yes, Riley. <laughs> uh, that's... Yeah. Nice. Did we see the Travis Kelsey, Bethany Frankel debacle? Can you explain that? The Ed Kelsey debacle. Ed Kelsey. Ed Ke Father Papa Kelsey. Papa Kelsey. He's Papa like, Kelsey. don't come for my sons. Just like Scott Swift was like, move, paparazzi. Get out of the fucking way. I love it. Essentially, Bethany Frankel like posted a TikTok and she had a caption, Travis Taylor torture talk. And it's her just talking about like the oversaturation of this couple. Sure. Granted, she says she's a, she admires them. Oh. Okay. But then... Kelsey's dad, he came out of nowhere and was like, who's this troll? Oh. <laughs> but I don't think he knew Hot, who she was. When did he say, you know, did he say this on social media or was he like stopped by that. TMZ? No, she's sorry, not sorry. I feel like Is that her tagline, Bethany? Is that like, because she says that a lot. Sorry, not sorry. Is that like her housewives tagline? Nope, that's no. just a Bethany life. That used to Bethany. be like the most, remember when that was no, sorry, as not cool sorry. as saying no, like, yeah. I mean, your I mom? <laughs> <laughs> I know that she didn't make it up. It's like Demi Lovato. But made the a fact song. that she's still saying it's like, babe, we've it's 2024. Get a new like. But, come on. Oh Here's my god, what... he reposted the article onto his Facebook, and the caption on his Facebook was, "Who TF is this troll?" <laughs> Not the TF. I love on Facebook, <laughs> which really speaks to like you know that's that's who uses, who uses Facebook. Our parents. Oh my you god. Know? <laughs> Justice for Ed Kelsey. <laughs> That is funny. Is Beth e. Frankel just crazy or crazy genius? Because we are talking about her. You know, there is there is that. She's like, our she, generation's Picasso. <laughs> she really seems to have <laughs> lost her marbles. I will say pre The Reckoning, I had a lot of respect for her. Same. Mm -hmm, same. But she was one of the earlier housewives and she kind of pushed this clause in the contracts that like housewives owned their personality outside of the show. Mm -hmm. I respect that. But then once the reckoning happened, it was kind of like... Now she just is saying the most bizarre things. Yeah. Like recently, she she just keeps arguing that she didn't need Bravo to become Bethany Frankel. That's, that's just a ridiculous thing to say. I, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for me going on The Bachelor. I am proud of the work I have done and put into my career post-Bachelor and... Yeah, I feel like I've been able to do things that, again, I'm proud of, but I'll, I got a platform. And, you know, us reality TV stars, you know, we, we have some talents, you know, running our mouths, you know, making interesting points from time to time, being willing to uh, get embarrassed from time to time. But it's not as if, like, there is a shortage of that in this universe. And to sit there and argue that she would have been Bethany Frankel with or without Bravo or Andy Cohen. It's just, it's, she, every time she says that, she loses credibility. It's so far-fetched. It's like... It's delusional. Yeah, without Bravo, there would be no skinny girl because she, she was like the first housewife that actually kind of pushed her own branding mm -hmm. on a TV show. I'm like, skinny girl is what built your empire. And at that time, she was not doing well. Like, I think her only, like, she... She's, she's gone on record saying I had no money. She had, I had no money show. before the show. Yeah, I didn't have a place, like... I was struggling for my daughter. Like, it's just like all of these things. So I'm like, no, that's a very far-fetched statement to say that Bravo or Andy or whoever is not she responsible. could be working at a counter at TJ Maxx or Marshall's with those same, very place that she is now donating her used makeup to. Wild. If it weren't for Bravo. Yeah. We should get Bethany on the show. I don't think she would come on. I, we, I, I, we, I've, I mean, you have asked. absolutely we have to, we have buried her name in the dirt and then shit <laughs> but, on it. So she probably wouldn't. But she's sorry, not sorry. She doesn't, she... She seems to enjoy having her name out there. Mm -hmm. I if I would love for her to come on the show just to argue with you. <laughs> Honestly, let's yeah, do it. Bethany. I'm here for it. Throw you in it too. You know what? Let's have like an Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, you w want me to w physically? Well, not well. Okay. Let's calm down. <laughs> well, I mean, that's an option. If she's down, <laughs> no, <I> <laughs> no, no, but like something like that, but with words only. With words only. A, yeah. a great debate. Would you mediate? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I feel like I'd be good. Who would be an objective person? Maybe yeah, I, you would take my side, wouldn't okay. you? Mm. Allie would. I, don't I know, would love but... to mediate. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would believe that Allie would be. Allie would be like, I don't know, Nick. Bethany makes a really good point. 
<laughs> also, Growing Bethany, up, I was like, I'm going to be the White House correspondent. So this is as close as I'm getting. She's yeah. like, I'm sorry, Nick. I know you. I work for you, but like, I'm sorry. Right but is right. Bethany, are you hiring? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, maybe uh, Bethany, if uh, if you're up for the challenge. Did you see the uh, Drew Barrymore? I did. First of all, she says her uh, daughter wants to wear a crop top, and Drew will tell her no, and she'll go. You were on the cover of Playboy. Mm. What would be your thing that River is going to have, to, besides The Bachelor? Besides The Bachelor? Yeah. Besides you sobbing, fake sobbing on national television. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see. Could be just, I don't know. Like my choice of style is questionable. Do you think Haircuts? like the uh, shirtless Bob Ross paintings? Maybe. Do you think she'll throw that in my face? I mean, if she, she doesn't, do, she like, should. She shirtless paintings, and I'll, and I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. no. And she'll be like, but you, you did. did. <laughs> yeah. Really, anything on, on social media is something I probably will regret, you know, uh, as my See, I feel like it's going to be just, like, in person. She'll be having a sleepover with her friends. Nick will, like, want to talk relationships. She won't want that. And then he'll be leaving the room, and he'll be like, okay, period, girl, slay. <laughs> <laughs> on his way out. And they'll be like, ugh, sorry. He's so annoying. <laughs> what about you? Because I feel like you'll run into that more than I will. Not, I'm not suggesting you've done but I just think mother-daughter relationship. You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Like your mom was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you. Uh, yeah, what about you? What are you afraid of her finding out? Afraid of her finding out? Or I'm just feel like afraid. she might throw in your face. I'm just afraid that she, if she's anything like me at... 14, 15, 13. <laughs> then we're... Well, she will be loved by her father, so she does have... That is true. There will be no daddy issues. That is true. And yeah. that might have been a large portion of why I yeah, chose that... <laughs> the choices that I did. <laughs> but... So hopefully we can circumvent some of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe like having the word paradise tattooed on my ass might be something that I like, regret ever <laughs> seeing. <laughs> Oh yeah, she'll want to get a tattoo. Yeah, she, she'll want to get a tattoo on her 18th birthday. She's gonna want to get a tattoo. Yeah, we'll both regret that. Yeah, and I'll be like, I waited till I was 40, and I'll be like, I got one at 17 with a fake ID. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> she's gonna clip this audio. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> actually, both of your answers is this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this, this, you're giving her a lot you of said. <laughs> I listened to that Ass Nick episode from 1992. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you went back, bitch. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be rough. <laughs> I don't know. Uh I think how do we just keep her off her phone? I, I think we don't I, get her a phone. I, I thought about that last night. I actually did wake up Natalie in the middle of the night. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no matter how much money we make, you know, in a couple years, our daughter is gonna be more self aware than we realize. And we can never give her the idea that we can just throw money at problems like she needs to think that we are frugal and short on cash i am her mother constantly so. uh she will think I, I literally was like hey now you sleep <laughs> <laughs> i have a thought <laughs> i have a thought about how we should parent her our daughter in three or three or four years and then i responded with my niece who she is has a pony she is given Anything that the sweet little angel wants. And my sister does not feel bad about it. She's like, go fuck yourself. I don't care. You want that? Sure, I'll get it. But she'll go into a store. And if my sister doesn't buy her something, it'll only be because Scarlett will change her mind. So she'll be like, how much is this, mom? And she'll be like, it's $22. She's like, oh, gosh, never mind. Like, she thinks any number is too expensive. $7. Oh, no, never. Okay, never mind. And like, well, How so- much was her pony? <laughs> She didn't ask. She didn't. Yeah, she doesn't know. <laughs> Wait, this is a real pony. Which pony? <laughs> she's got several. This is a real pony. No, she yeah. has ponies. Yeah. Oh. She's got several ponies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But she does live on a farm. So. Okay. And I think they're more so my sister like rescues them. And then she's like, this one's for you, Scarlett. You know? Yeah. So, That's But cute. she does have a pony. Yeah. And our daughter won't, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it fits so well in your backyard. <laughs> Drink out of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> there would be literally no spot. Yeah. Oh, a pony and Jeff and Steve <laughs> <laughs> sharing a backyard. Uh, That'd be rough. Hopefully we won't live there by the time 
Yeah, I fell I fell in love with the house the other day, and Nick shot my dreams down very very quickly. Nelly falls in love with houses like socks. I'm like, I have to have this one. I'm like, no. Who falls in love with socks? I've never felt that way about a sock. I guess I don't know. (laughs) Bad comparison. Okay. But I was quick to point out its flaws. Wait, what did you love about the house? It was the interior, just like my dreams. The finishings were very nice. It was just like. It it honestly the, the backyard Nick didn't like it was on a bad street there was no privacy of the backyard mm. like uh, meh, 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 meh. but inside was absolutely gut wrenchingly sobbed my eyes out puking screaming and crying at the same time beautiful gorgeous everything I've wanted in a home and you know what when I shut that front door that's all I care about it could be no. mayhem on the outside no I hated the front lawn you I can build the a backyard. backyard you can build it though. No, Find some trees. I did take some no. Things. Once you have like the, the thing in LA, you know, there's not a ton of space, and so like you're limited to that lot. So you 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 can redo the inside. You can you can adjust the finishings, but you can't get more land. You can buy a lot and only build. if they're selling. Like, only if your neighbors are like, "Hey, I don't want this property anymore. Do you want to buy it?" Sure. What about like yeah. a giant tree house? You get a second story of a backyard. Yeah. Right. No. Genius. I just don't think that was our house. But it's nice to see things that we like. You right. know, as I said to Natalie, add it to our wish list. Yeah. Take little bits and pieces. And then I punched them. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's time to get to Jess. Uh, Jess, who was on Rally Recap again, but we wanted to find out uh, how Jess felt about finally meeting Jimmy and her reactions to that and more. So uh, it's time for Jess's part two. Welcome back. <laughs> It's Look great. at that. It's great to have you back, Jess. Long time no talk. All right. All right. All right. All right. We have a lot to get into. All right. First, let's just talk about the uh, lake party. Oh, my God. They really made us wait for you to finally meet Jimmy. Yes. Which was like for the big, for a lot of people, that was the whole goddamn season. Like, what I was Jimmy's going to be? What was Jimmy's reaction? It was kind of anticlimactic, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you definitely tease it up. You know, as you mentioned, you got a little wine drunk uh, with Laura. And uh, really made us feel like you were going to go coming guns a-blazing for your man. No. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> they also definitely made us think that she was the girl. Like, <gasps> that uh, that she's oh, yeah. yelling about. That oh, yeah. was the, the hardest preview. thing to not say anything about. Because I was like, I would never. I'm like, everyone who thought I was going to be a homewrecker, I want to know how the foot in your mouth tastes <laughs> at this point. I well, I mean, know. it's interesting because, uh, you know, AD had a very interesting conversation with Sarah. AD makes valid points. Absolutely. The, we all know how I feel about infidelity and cheating, but this is an experiment as the the show, which I love that the show does that because it is an experiment. Mm-hmm. And I think shows like The Bachelor pretend that it's not. Sure. And all, ultimately, this is a social experiment that, they, that you guys are all in. It's fucking crazy. And it brings out certain emotions. But did you feel like you were still part of the experiment? And do you think Sarah has any valid reason to suggest what she does is that like well this is her experience in this experiment as well and because we have had other couples not get engaged in the pods that are now currently married with child Mm -hmm. and so is sarah wrong for being like well i don't know jeremy and laura together and hands off i have no stake in this or is she supposed to deny her feelings and and do you now that you've been on the show do you think love is blind that was a couple questions. Yeah. I know. I'll start with Sarah. <laughs> um, I found her approach to it to be profoundly inappropriate. Okay, profoundly. Because no one could empathize with how she was feeling more than me. And it just was, we were all so close in the pods. Mm-hmm. I think this season really showed like the friendships were so real. Like we didn't have any cattiness, even between Laura and Sarah Ann. So her feelings were so valid and so real. And it is so hard to fall in love with someone and then just have it cut off like that and see them you know right off into the sunset with essentially one of your friends so her feelings were valid it was her approach that was just so disrespectful um i felt like if she really couldn't fight her feelings and she really needed that closure or that last conversation she could have reached out to laura and been like hey i'm having a really hard time with this would you mind and even if laura had said no like just that small amount of consideration i think would have made a world of difference Mm -hmm. And the difference between in the other seasons in this one is the guy who made the choice is the one who reached back out. It wasn't the girl who didn't get I, picked. I get that. And then they also broke up prior to getting back to the respective city. I'm, I'm not saying that Sarah did it the right way. And I'm not saying she, C and Jeremy don't have reasons to say that was messy. 
we could have gone about in a better way. I'm just more speaking to the fact that they even entertained feelings outside of the pods. It's just the lack of consideration and accountability, honestly. Because even in her conversation with Lori, you see there's not really a moment where she like throws herself on the sword and it's just like, I'm sorry, just for, for our friendship for you. If you look at it from a perspective of what I have wanted that done to me, there is no question she wouldn't have wanted gotcha. that, you right. know? When you met Jimmy on camera, uh, was that the first time that you met him face to face? It was. Okay. It was. Was there any interactions? I know there was a, a, a face, a friend request, <laughs> yeah. right, an unfriend request. Did you see that friend request? I did. You and did. I left it floating in the ether. <laughs> you didn't answer it. I did not. And then he makes a point about, you know, how I, well, I made the point about how I go and look at his profile and I did my digging and I'm like, well, you know, he had his profile in public. If I had had mine on public, he wouldn't have sent the friend request. Oh, you okay. I see he was fish. Then when you left the pods, how quickly did you go? On the I I didn't I didn't go looking for him. You actually. weren't the least bit curious. No, well I was curious, but like I I was like I find that to be inappropriate. I don't know. I really okay. I did not look at his profile until his friend request came through. Um, and so <laughs> I mean, yeah, his profile was on public, and I looked. Okay. Um, but the conversation that I had at the wine bar about that it was you know disrespectful, and I should not have said the things that I said. But at the same time. I would have had the same conversation in front of Chelsea. Okay. When you met him, like, what was the initial thoughts that were going through your head? Like, were you, like, dodged a bullet? Like, thank God I didn't end up having to do the rest of the experiment. Were you like, oh, he it was the strangest mix of emotions I think I've probably ever felt. Because, yes, I did feel like I dodged a bullet and I knew that he wasn't my person. But there was an equal amount of, oh, my God, this is the person I just fell in love with, like, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And he knows more about me than most humans walking this planet. Yeah. So I felt like a connection, but not a connection as far as like, I want to be with him or I'm wondering of like what could have been. Okay. Uh, I know I asked you this earlier. Now that you've gone through this experiment, do you think love is more blind or more deaf? Because <laughs> we talk a lot on this show uh, and we give a lot of relationship advice and you hear people. And I always say, no one lies to us when we lie to ourselves. 100%. We have very selective hearing when we're emotionally invested in someone. And so despite you not being able to see these people and talking to these people, it's very easy to cherry pick what we want to hear or how we want to interpret what people mm -hmm. say. <laughs> the interpretation is a big one. And so now that you have fallen in love with someone without seeing them, um, do you think love is more blind or deaf? um no for me i can say love was blind because if i had gone through the process and met jimmy at the reveal i would have been initially like okay no he's not the physical type i would typically go for but we had the emotional connection which i can tell you is much stronger than a physical one for sure so for me yes i can say love was blind but we wouldn't have gone the distance after. you wouldn't have gone the distance. no okay but not because i found him physically unattractive but because of his actions and how his throttle <laughs> that would have been a deal can we, can, can we talk about his girlfriends absolutely <laughs> yeah i mean it seemed to be what ultimately broke him and chelsea up right i get both sides i get where jimmy's coming from you know from his standpoint like it, it is possible for i think two adult people in today's hookup culture to like hook up with someone and then realize we're just fucking friends become platonic friends be single down the road. But <laughs> well, no. you're saying no, but it is, I mean, I'm it, with her. I'm just saying, as a single person, mm -hmm. I think what Jimmy. It's, it is black and white for me. No, I get that. No, I'm just saying, I'm just talking about Jimmy's uh, evolution of the friendship. I'm not talking about in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I understand that Jimmy could have a platonic friendship as a single man with someone that he hooked up with in prior. I also understand that if he enters into a committed relationship, that might change the dynamic of that friendship. As it should. Sure. But I'm just wondering, how would you have liked Jimmy to handle that with Chelsea or you had you been the one to get engaged to Jimmy? So he and I talked about our friends in the pods and he had told me about them, actually. And I was like, immediately, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no for me. Did you knew he had hooked up with one of them? <sighs> you just assumed. I am extremely intuitive. The way he had talked about them, I did assume. Which one is it? Because there was one who was particularly seemed flirtatious and there was one that was like stone cold and I can't tell. I, I'm not sure. I think I have an idea, but I'm not sure who it is. Okay. But I was just like, I'm not comfortable with that. Like, I think that males and females can have male and female friends. That's great. I think it's healthy. 
But I think there's a boundary, especially when you're talking about your who's going to be your wife. Like, I'm, it's not some casual relationship. Like, I should be able to say I'm not comfortable with that or there needs to be better lines and boundaries put in place mm-hmm. and him be like, easy, done. And I don't think that's something he was willing to do even after Chelsea expressing her discomfort with it. Well, and the whole point of getting into a relationship is that you do become each other's best friends. So it's like I shouldn't have to feel like I need to compete or be intimidated by or that something could be swayed based off of these two women, one of which you've slept with in the past. And I'm seeming unreasonable because I'm not comfortable with it. Like, that's not right. I wouldn't. It was that was a deal breaker for me. Okay. What did you think about Jimmy's comment saying that Chelsea was fishing because she was insecure about the Jess thing? In that particular situation, um, I think that she was fishing. That night that she was talking about, he and I had not ran into each other. We both did happen to be out that night, but at different places. And I think she assumed because we were both with people from Love is Blind that we were all together. But I think that You know, he didn't provide the foundation for her to feel safe and secure enough to ask certain questions. So I think she was fishing to say, yeah, Jess was there, even though I wasn't. And that just kind of like blew up because we weren't even in the same place. One final question before we have to send you out here. There was a part on the lake party where Jimmy was like, just, you know, you were my number one. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did you make of that? And then and then Chelsea kind of said said the same thing to Trevor. I don't remember what I made of it, but I was just kind of like, "Okay, well, that's kind of. Null and void because you're getting married to someone else. So that's probably shouldn't say that. (laughs) Either way, you were just like, yeah, I don't find you that particular. Who is your type? (laughs) (laughs) My type. I have a super specific type. Yeah, I would like to hear it. Yeah. Like extremely tall, like at least 6'2, at least. That's not extremely tall, but it is tall. (laughs) Well, I'm saying because most of my exes are like 6'4, 6'5. So you like tall? Yeah. Okay. And? Um, that's not beard. very specific. That's beard. Always a beard. Yeah. I prefer tattoos, but like, like a sleeve. But if they don't have it, okay, um, I might be okay with that. Like, just like tall, dark, and handsome. So not Jimmy, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what I said. But most of us on there, you you see the person you fell in love with, and nine times out of ten, they're not your physical type. Yeah. So we we all know that. Yeah. Well, if anybody's listening, <laughs> just is here. <laughs> yeah. Is there anyone from the pods who you would have gone for now, looking back at what they all look like? Maybe. (laughs) I can't say. Why not? You can't say maybe. Don't be the girl in school who's like, I know someone who likes you. Yeah, no, that's so annoying. I hate that girl. You're so right. Um, Because I'm still trying to sort certain things out. We're not not saying you're going to marry them, but you're just. She might be like, you're you're being vulnerable to say that like there was some interest, but we're not holding you to it. We're just we're just saying that there might. No, I had another strong connection there. Who are you most physically attracted to? She might be like talking to them right now. (laughs) Yeah. For for this thing. We're just asking physical attraction. You would probably use context clues if you looked at the cast, but I'm not. I can't say any names because I'm Who's still tall, to, dark, and handsome. I'm still trying to sort some things out. Okay, she's still trying mm. to sort some things out. I've learned to hold my cards closer to my chest with stuff like that. That's until, no fun for until, us. Until I know. Sorry, <laughs> you'll be the first. How about this? You'll be the first to know when that mm. changes. Um, I just until I've like believe me, y'all. The world will be sick of me. Do when we I, know when I'm dating someone? It's going to be so in everyone's faces. I'm going to be so public and so proud about it you will know okay and a final question before you go just a general dating question you have the ability to probably date most men that you want and i think we all like to chase people we have a heart we we like to be fixers red flags you know sometimes we confuse red flags as an opportunity to feel special i've been there um now that you you know you're a mother uh you've been through it before uh, how do you handle if you meet someone uh, that might come with a reputation or two? And how do you go about like either taking the advice of people or the reputation that they have versus figuring things out for yourself? I'm trying to approach things like that with like an open mindset, especially if they're forthcoming and like they take accountability for who they are and what their past is. If they're like, hey, you know, I know I don't have the best reputation, but that's not who I am now. And I just want you to hear me out, mm-hmm. and, like give me a chance until you know i give you a reason to think otherwise then i think that's fair and i think we should all do that especially if it's someone you're super interested in um but like proceed with caution like don't make excuses and don't like a red flag is a red flag okay all right 
Uh, Jess, I know you have to get going, but can't thank you enough for answering our questions. We wish you the best of luck on love and life in the future. And um, yeah, thank good you luck for with everything. Me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Yay. And we're back. So who do you think Jess wants to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, we asked Jess, is there any else from the cast that she might be interested in? And she surprisingly said yes. I was caught off guard by this. I was too. I was surprised that she answered that question at all. And I don't know, you know Sierra, you were in the room. Uh, she, Justin, Leia, you were all in the room. Not only she didn't, she was like, you know, she wasn't, it wasn't like a maybe. It felt like a yeah, she for sure. Also said something about like, if you listen to the context clues of yeah. what she said, you'd we, be able to could, figure it out. Figure it well, she out. described her type. And then when we asked her who from the pods she's seeing, she said, use context clues based on my type. So, let I, I mean, what do you, who do you guys think? It's tall, dark, and handsome. With a beard, That's right? everyone's type. That's With a beard. Yeah, what does tall, dark, and handsome mean? Well, and, that's, and I've also seen range of like what dark means as well. So I'm like- I, Yeah, does dark mean just brown hair? Tan, does it mean- So I'm between Trevor and I'm between Clay. Those are my two guesses. But do you Trevor. think it would be Trevor, given all of the Definitely accusations being thrown his way? No. What about Austin? He looks like a like a good looking barista. A good looking barista. <laughs> he does look like a barista. That's a really good call. Love that. Maybe I... Vince. Vince could be an option. Oh, he's oh. cute. Oh, no, really? Vince, Vince looks like Jess's. He's guy. a finance bro. Mm. Money. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I mean, I guess. And we need their heights. I don't know Jamal looks like this. a like a like a good looking guy. Would she have ever met? Any of she these met all these people. people. She met all of them. She well, said she well, had in a... person. I don't know. I mean, she. Yeah. You know these these Love Is Blind cast. They're all from the same city. Obviously, you know these intense experiences. Like a lot of people from The Bachelor hang out. Like it's just you go through an experience that is impossible for anyone to relate to, mm -hmm. and you are bonded for life to these people. Even if you don't, even if they're not your favorite people. So these people all yeah. get together and hang out. And for all these people, we don't like all the, this Drake, this Austin guy. Ariel, Ariel guy, like She's... we never even heard of them, but like I guarantee you there have been gatherings and get togethers. Yeah, but even in Bachelor World, they aren't fans of the people who left night one. You know, they're not famous enough for him. So you mean, I feel oh, yeah, like the, night, yeah. the hierarchy. <laughs> yeah. a, there is a bit of a hierarchy sometimes. Yeah. Well, that only usually happens because sometimes people are annoying. She said <laughs> that she had a strong connection with someone else in the pods. Right. <sighs> hmm. And I felt like she said that she likes a bigger, a bigger person. Am I, it's really hard to tell so maybe, the size of these people, though. Know, well, that's I why I, heights. my brain goes to Trevor, even though I know with all of the stuff. But I'm like, oh, and I feel like they didn't have any at the. Uh, what about Matthew? Barbecue. Matthew. No, Matthew. God, no. Do you not remember? No, I remember. I'm just saying, like, you know, <laughs> some things are edited and maybe he's just like. I don't Who is Dion? <laughs> Look at that <laughs> smile. He was refer D uh, uh, Matthew was referred to as Clark Kent. What about Jamal? There's no beard. She said she liked a beard. No, he, there is a beard. It's just, uh, yeah, you can't really tell. It's shaping his face. I just find that, um, no. Yeah, it's not really a beard. It's more like an outline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let us know in the comments. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're stumped. Comment down below. Yeah. I wish yeah. it had heights instead of jobs, because... You know, yeah, right. Don't we don't care, care what, what you do for is. work. We just want to know how tall you are. <laughs> yeah, that should be their bio instead of like lose anything the name. Else. It should say six four. <laughs> That's all anyone wants to know. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe it's Drake. It is always crazy how many people are on these shows that you never hear, hear of, or like and didn't oh, see. Did, yeah, and a lot of them get married, and we just don't. Some of them know. do. Not yeah. a lot of them. Some of them. Okay. Most of them still, are just most of them are just people who don't form connections, mm -hmm. you know, and they do this obviously because the premise of Love Is Blind is insane. Yeah, and they need to cast a bunch of extras because most people I think show up and like, yeah, no, sorry, didn't fall in love. <laughs> I think that happens more often than not. I think very rarely do people fall in love, and we don't get to see those stories. I think those are extenuating circumstances. But yeah, I think most of it is just people who are <laughs> realize that they didn't get sucked up into the experiment. I feel like that happens to me a lot when I'm watching The Bachelor. Like, it'll be like week six and all of a sudden I'll be like, wait, who is she? Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you've been there the whole time. Like but Rachel I'm just... into the top four right now. It's like, how did you? <laughs> I saw like a Twitter post be like, uh, people I expected Joey to pick before Rachel and it was just like a, a list of like 32 different things. RBG? Like, yeah. <laughs> Chris Harrison was on that list, you know? Like, yeah, she really, we, we have not seen much of Rachel or Joey's love story. We, uh, she made it to top four, so get a girl. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, that about wraps it up. I think it's time to get to uh, our feature, the one and only Candy Burris. Before we get to Candy, don't forget to send us questions at asknickofthevalfiles.com for all things texting office hours. Ask Nick. You know the drill. We'll also be back on Monday for another episode of Ask Nick to hear a bunch of amazing people's wild and crazy relationship problems. And we help them solve those. So be sure to tune into those episodes. And we'll be back on uh, Tuesday for Reality Recap, getting into, obviously, Love is Blind, uh, this new batch uh, that just dropped, uh, Bachelor. We got Hometowns. And then we got some Traders. We got, uh, oh, Housewives, Beverly Hills Reunion, Vanderpump. Not skinny. And it seems like the Beverly Hills uh, Housewives uh, Reunion is a, mm, yep. It's going to get good. You know what it seems like? It seems like uh, a lot of, of these women went into this uh, season finale, and it's interesting because Candy did shed some light on how these decisions are made into like the renewals and how you get asked back or not get asked back. Okay. Um, Candy, I don't want, don't want to spoil anything, but it seems like a lot of these women went into this reunion unclear as if if they had it, secured their position for next season, and it seems like the vibe I'm getting is they're coming to save their jobs. They're coming for yeah. their diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, I'm excited. Maybe. Um, Do you think the um, emergency is set in small esophagus acting up? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I do think we have to hear Anne Marie talk about her <laughs> medical background. And Dorit <laughs> it seems to be uh, team Anne Marie. So. And also wearing a hood. And wearing a hood. Justin likes it. I like it. I like it too. Okay. Uh, you do? Yeah. There we go. What do you like about it? She took a, she took a risk. She did take a risk. And I appreciate the risk. So the 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 we just have to take a risk. <laughs> no, <laughs> gonna have to it's nail a good it. risk. She looked powerful in it. She did. It was a flex on the other woman. Yeah, the other woman looked puny. You have to wear it with confidence. Mm-hmm. Take a risk and then be confident. She does always look confident in what she wears. Okay, well we'll be talking about it on Tuesday. Let's get to Candy Burris. All right, it's time uh, to always think about uh, how are we staying our shape? How are we being our best selves? Peloton. Peloton. That's the way to do it. Why waste time going to the gym? Packing a bag, meeting people, yuck, looking for parking. You could be done with your workout and drinking a smoothie by the time you get on to the elliptical at the gym if you just got yourself a Peloton bike. It's that simple. And it's a way to keep in touch with all your friends you know, who don't live in the same city. You can be like, hey, do you want to race? On, on our Peloton, they'll be like, yes. And then you can listen to your favorite music. And like, watch TV. And watch TV. That's the best part. They have and, live sports. Yeah. Also, you can know, you now you can rent a Peloton bike. Don't have to buy one. Even if you want, if you, if you want to just try it out. Maybe, maybe the idea sounds cool to you, but you're like not sure if you want to fully commit. Don't worry. You can now uh, rent a Peloton bike. That is true. Either a Peloton bike or a Peloton bike, bike plus, and they include the bike cycling shoes, and your membership in one combined monthly price. Ooh. Not the shoes combo. Yeah. It's like getting a bowling ball and bowling shoes. Two for one. Uh, So get your Peloton on now. Again, they have great instructors, great classes. You can vibe out to your favorite music. uh, And the best part is you can do it with friends. And we just don't have a lot of time, people. I mean, do you have three hours to go to the gym? Because that's what it that's what it takes. Peloton also helps you no matter what level you're at. Wherever you're starting, there's thousands of classes to get you moving. So if you're a beginner or advanced, they also have a live DJ, artist themes rides. They've got something for you. There's something for everyone. If you yeah. want to watch TV, if you want to watch a movie, if you want to jam out to a DJ. So get your Peloton on wherever you are starting. Get moving with a Peloton bike or bike plus rental at onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Terms apply. Again, that's onepeloton.com slash bike slash rentals. Terms apply. Candy, welcome to the (laughs) (laughs) Volvo. What's up? Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy you're here. We are big fans of you here. We are. Oh, thank you. I just want to say congratulations on what an incredible run on your time on bravo well thank you so much you recently did you like it's like did you have like announced your retirement are you retired from it are you did you are you taking a break the people want to know are you andy cohen on pause pause? what does that mean (laughs) (laughs) apparently he pauses people and then brings them back like dorinda from new york she said she was on pause okay well they didn't pause me. Okay. I paused myself. You heard it Look. here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to be clear. 
Andy was actually sad that I left. I bet. Yeah. So um, he and I had our good heart to heart yeah. um, before anybody else in the world knew. You know, we had our own moment. Oh, uh, moment. Did Andy know first? Do, who's the I first mean, one you told? Do you like producers or? How, how well, no. You... Well, I guess my agent kind of just sent them the production company and the network a letter, just a nice letter. Basically, basically just saying, you know, thank you for the opportunity, but Candy has decided that she's not, you know, coming back. Coming back. But thanks for, you know, all the years and how uh, whatever. How quickly did you hear from them as soon as that letter was sent? I guess the same day. Okay. Because I didn't know that, well, my, um, well, he's gone into management now, Nick. Is who sent them the letter? <laughs> Not you, Not me, no. <laughs> another Nick. Yeah. He sent it, so I didn't even know he had sent the letter. You know what I mean? I mean, you but, knew he was going to send a letter, but you just yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, he wasn't like on your. I behalf, didn't know he yeah. had sent sent it at that, that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I had got um the call from Andy, he was just like, ah, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and I was like about <laughs> because i didn't want to like speak before oh, he, he yeah. actually and he's said, like wait what <laughs> i was calling for something else <laughs> yeah i just wanted to make sure we were talking about the same, same thing. thing you know and he was just like i mean I, I just i don't know how i feel about this and i said well i don't, I don't know how, if how i feel about it either but i just you know think it's time you know what i mean is that what it what it came down to i mean you're the longest running housewife on bravo right that that's correct yes was it just well i was until i said bye I sure. <laughs> now um now i think Teresa. Teresa from jersey yeah, yeah. Teresa and um ramona but i think what it is is i am the longest running consecutive non-stop like you know, with I think Ramona, you haven't missed a season. Yeah, straight through. Yeah, I think Ramona she t- was on she had pause. on pause. She had a pause. Yeah. Teresa a went to jail. Unfortunately, unfortunately, so the whole I'm... show paused. Yes, for her. Yeah, you know. Um, but I did not do any pauses. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was you a were press play the whole time. It was on, on play. On play. In that moment, on fast forward. Fast forward. Straight through. Yeah. You know well, what I, I mean? mean, I I only got into Bravo not too long ago. Really? But, yeah. But I've been well, like my long ago, you know, when you first went on. Mm-hmm. My girlfriend at the time was watching Housewives. So I, I've known of you for the longest time. And like, there's oh, so many Housewives I didn't know existed. You know, there's still a lot of Housewives I'm kind of learning because like there's so many franchises. I haven't watched every single one, but I, mm-hmm. I know who you are. I've known. Well, thanks. Mm-hmm. And it seems like what I've learned as the show has gone on, like for, and I said this t- to Denise Richards when she was on, it seems like when Housewives started, there was a certain type of pedigree that they were looking for. You know, okay. like accomplished outside of being a reality TV star. They they made not it on when their, they first started. Not when they first started. No, because you got to remember Orange County. It was just a bunch of cool. it was okay. a bunch of Orange County ladies, like, like wealthy women. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they just oh, were maybe, ladies with money. Maybe that's why I had that. It was just perception. women with okay. money. Women with I money, think, yeah. and no, I might be wrong. Okay, I might. Be you know wrong. more than I would. Well, I just know in Atlanta, but I think of any of them at that time because it was on OC at the time. I think Jersey had started in New York maybe around our time when when, um, Atlanta first started. Mm -hmm. I think I was the first um, person who had any celebrity prior to the show. To so come did you warp my perspective of of a housewife? Because yeah, because I remember becoming. I warped yeah, your yeah. perspective. Yeah. Well, because I remember <laughs> knowing, learning about you, and you were a very successful music producer. You you did all these projects, and that's what I thought you had to do to be a housewife. And then no. I became more familiar with it. I'm like, wait, not if you really go back and think about it, all the ladies from, like I said, the beginning of OC, they were just wealthy women. Um, the women I know that started on Atlanta, they were, you know, wealthy. And that was kind of different because that was the first time you had a majority black cast other than Kim Zosiak. You know, she was the only woman who wasn't black on Atlanta. So all of them were just women who had wealthy men. Oh. Nobody, because 
Okay, I'll tell you my first experience about anybody even talking to me about this show. So I watched um, Atlanta, Housewives of Atlanta, first season, and I thought it was hilarious. I thought the women were so funny, but, you know, I had no thoughts of me being on that show. It was just like, oh, they are funny. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? And um, my friend Derek J., he's been on Housewives before, Mm -hmm. you know, like as a friend or whatever. We were friends. And he's a hairstylist that did everybody's hair. So he called me. He was like, hey, he was like, um, they're looking for some women to be on Atlanta Housewives. And, he, and I was like, oh, OK. And I was like, yeah, I'm doing cool. something already. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, well, I'm going to tell them to call you anyway, because they need somebody with their own money. <gasps> and I <Damn>. said, <laughs> Yeah, all right, whatever. And I just went on about my business, not even thinking about it. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, yeah, I guess like a majority of the women in the very, very beginning were women who had wealthy husbands, boyfriends, mm-hmm. whatever. And then it changed. Okay. It changed when you came along. Changed you when I came along. <laughs> Start it up. Start it up. After me, shout out to um, you know, on our series, you know, you had the Kenya Moores who, mm-hmm. you know, she had her celebrity, Cynthia Bailey yeah. had, you know, celebrity, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm just talking about our sure, specific sure. franchise. Right. Obviously, on the other franchises, a lot so of the mixed women, bag, yeah. Yes, yeah, mixed. Yeah. I mean, there's still so, some of the franchises still, you know, are just women who genuinely are in relationships with wealthy men. Because if you think of the, the definition of a housewife, it's somebody who gets to kick it at, on, the, house. You know, at the house. Rich. You know, yeah. rich. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. You got money, chilling, you know, with the kids. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do you watch any of the other franchises? Are you a fan of any of the other ones? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Silence. Please, crickets, do crickets, crickets. I hate that you asked me that question. Okay, so... No, she Ooh. hates all of them. No, 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 no. What it is is I'll just get busy and fall off. Of so, course. Yes. Um, when Jersey first started, I watched like season one, maybe season two. I think I'm really locked into the original people who were on the show because that's the season I right. watched. Or I think I... Yeah, that's probably them. <laughs> no, and, and Potomac, I have watched, you know, a few episodes here and there. Now I just like look at the clips online sure. and keep up. <laughs> and you're like going. familiar with a lot of them, but you're yeah, not necessarily I'm familiar, but okay. I don't necessarily watch. But back to my original question. Is it was it just time or was there other reasons for why you decided to hang it up as a housewife? Time, but not the time you're talking about. It. So, you know, for the last few years, I have been trying to like debate like, OK, when is my time that I'm supposed to? you know, step away or whatever. Like, am I just gonna wait till they decide to put yeah. me on pause? Or um, am I, gonna you know... Gonna die on this show? <laughs> yeah, like, what is what is my plan? And I kept <laughs> yeah. asking myself like that. So every year, I would have this, like, question to myself. And, but this year, what happened was they were planning to recast, like, a couple of people or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So during right after the last season, we knew that they were going to take a couple of months or whatever to start interviewing people. Right. So during the first couple of months, I was just like, OK, well, let's give me time to do what I got to do. You know, I'm working on other things. But then they were like, OK, well, we're still trying to figure out, you know, what we're doing or whatever, whatever. So I was like, oh, OK. So in that time, I had did some other movies. I had some more, you know, TV yeah, stuff. Yeah. I had redid one of my music deals or whatever mm-hmm. that I have. And so I was like really making a lot of big moves. Outside of the show. Outside of the show. Not to say that I hadn't been doing that every year prior. Right. But this year was specifically different because for me, I finished my contract. So it was my choice. Uh-huh on if I had to go back. Like, it wasn't just a simple, oh, they send me a pickup letter. Right. And then I have to go back. Like, how it is, you know, most of the time or whatever. With everybody else, they waiting for their Mm pickup letter or whatever. And and for those of you who don't know, what's a pickup letter? It's like, so say, for instance, if my contract is, um, say, if I have a year and six options or if I I have a year and two options, a year one options, whatever your options are. That means the network has, has the, the option, option. Yeah. to pick you up um, or not. 
You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So they can pick you up and they send you a letter and that means you just automatically go into your That's next sure. year. Yeah. And if they don't pick you up, they don't really fire you. They're just not picking you up. Right. So, and then you're just sitting there kind of like... In limbo. In limbo. And you have On to pause. wait. Yeah. Mm. So for me, my contract was up. You know, you have to wait like from the last date of your last episode before you can actually commit to something mm-hmm. uh, uh, something without having to ask for their permission. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Other girls would be like, well, what do you think they're going to do? And I'm like, well, I'm not really tripping about what they do. You know, I'm working on me. And if it works out, then cool. I said, what y'all do not understand for me, it's a bigger conversation than what they decide to do. It's about what I am deciding to do for myself. And the more months went by, the more I really started thinking, you know what? If I was ever going to really go after some of these other things that I wanted to do, I need to do it now. Because I don't know if you guys watched last season or not. Everybody was like kind of upset with me because I had took on a lot of other job opportunities during the time of filming, (laughs) which were (laughs) conflicts. And so I was kind of getting in trouble or whatever. Well, meaning that, you know, they'll be like, oh, you, you know, you know, you had this to do, but blah, blah, blah. I had did all these shows in my group Escape that I had committed to. But I had committed to before they started the season. So I felt like, well, you already knew. (laughs) That's your fault, not mine. But then I had um, a movie, a TV show. So uh, it was like multiple things that had happened. So last season, as it played, everybody was like, dang, she's always busy. And it's not that I was trying to be busy all the time. But I do have a lot of goals so anyway do you feel like that put like a target on your back with your, the other housewives almost kind of being last season for sure be, yeah for sure yeah. Mm-hmm. but i'm gonna I... get to that this year i knew it was not gonna be any different i knew that i was going to be doing other tv shows i mean scripted stuff mm-hmm. that i want to do just other things i have going on my group is supposed to be going on tour as well this year some other things that i i have that are pending mm-hmm. okay so the longer they took before they were like making decisions about what they wanted to do, I was like, you know what? I don't think that I should go back. And so um, I had talked to Nick, my Nick, about mm-hmm. it. I talked to my husband, of course, about it. And we just kind of like came to the decision that, yeah, let's not. And they did come back and were like, you know, like, okay, you know, they wanted to go ahead and work out my deal or whatever. Do so, they try to fight for you to come back? I mean, I get a pretty nice coin. Yeah, we've heard. Yeah. We have we don't know for sure, but... Rumor has it. Rumor has it. You're, you've been well compensated. Some okay. would say so the I, highest. I don't know. I don't know what anybody else's check is. That's just and I the don't rumor go mill. And I don't go into asking what anybody <laughs> else's check is. That's and I don't like for them to ask about mine. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't about the money. Okay. Because realistically. Whatever it is, it seems like it's a good amount. And your willingness to leave sounds like you didn't need it. It's not that I don't need it. Who doesn't need money? We all (laughs) But you have other things going on. Yeah, I just decided I just decided that right now I wanted to take this moment to go after the other things that I really wanted. Okay. There's so many ways to make money without having the stress and the negativity of what I was dealing with on the show. Yeah. So that's just why I said it's time. And then plus, you know, if you like look at what the fans be saying and stuff, you know, sometimes the fans be like, ah, she's boring. She's this, she's that. Oh, why is this? Why is that? It's like, okay, well, you know what? Okay. Have a season without me. Good luck. Yeah, I feel I'm like still the... supportive of the girls. Yeah. yeah, You know, I still want them to be successful. All of them? I mean, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, 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 no. I'm not a hater. Like, I want everybody to, yeah. you know, do well. Sure. Even if we didn't get along on the okay. show, I don't care about that. Is well, the door closed pretty... or open? What? About the show? Coming back? Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe Cracked. later. Maybe later okay, maybe. in right. life. Okay. Right, yeah. You guys, here's, this is a real statement, not fiction. Okay. I turned down three shows in that two weeks. <laughs> three? Three. Are these Bravo shows or just general shows? I'm not saying what shows. <laughs> okay. okay. There's options. Right. Because, you want it. 
Well, I mean, obviously, you, you know, I said no to coming back to RHOA, but two other opportunities outside of that, basically. And I was just like, OK, yeah, how does that even make sense? I'm not going to if I'm not going to if I'm going to take away a minute away from the stress and drama of the reality TV space mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Why would it make sense to do it there? So yeah. entirety, I'm not doing it. As talent, anyway. Sure. Like, me and my husband, we can produce some stuff. Sure. But for now. Okay. Like, I'm not going to say later in life. I right. Don't know. You, never right. you never know. But right now, because the other things that I want to do as far as, like, acting and doing, like, I've had so many opportunities that I've never even talked to people about or told people that I had to turn down because of my commitment to the show you know what I mean and um and I'm not saying like it's a bad thing Bravo has been great to me I've had a you know great opportunity from it but I'm just saying like for a person who really wants to be taken seriously as an actress mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. if, you know other things that I wanted to do and was like yeah well you know the scheduling conflicts because right. we shoot most of the year I was doing reality I did Housewives you do that for six months mm -hmm. You know, then you pick doing pickups, and a lot of times I was doing two reality shows in one year. So it was like I have Housewives. Last one was Escape at SWV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Before you know, I did um Candy in the Gang, and then have Still Housewives all in the same year. Like I'd be nonstop shooting all year round, which means other things I wanted to do I wasn't able to do. Yeah. Did you have a small part in Insecure? the show insecure a long time I did. ago I, i'm pretty sure we were on set together you were there too yeah it was that show within the show yes yes yes, yeah. yes yes i was like i, re I kind of vague it was yeah, a long time ago that was but funny. i funny. yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah you were there i remember mm -hmm. i'm like i'm pretty sure that's candy anyway one of the things you're like most known for in bravo world and i think a lot of people appreciate about you was that you, you know, you were so vulnerable with your entire family, your kids, your mom. And, and that's something when I first, when I got to hear you speak at the Women Top 40 event, you, you spoke a lot about just like the difficulty and the challenges around that. Yeah. Was that part of the reason that played into you leaving? And, you know, I guess what is the overall toll that took on you and your family? Because it, it is a lot to allow people and cameras to come in film your family yeah. allow fans to critique the vulnerability that your family is willing to share like what was that like and how did you navigate that with your kids and with your mom and your husband i mean mm -hmm. the little bit of experience i had is on reality tv is nothing like that because there's you know on the bachelor it's very siloed you go in mm -hmm. you're in this bubble you meet a bunch of friends but your your family's not really involved mm -hmm. and so you can kind of separate that to have your family be involved is like a whole nother animal yeah no. and i really respect how you were able to do that but how were you able to navigate it's that it's harder to do um reality when your family is involved but at the same time to me for you to be successful in reality you have to have people around you who don't mind being transparent mm -hmm. and sharing their stories as well because one person that's funny a successful story does not make mm -hmm. <laughs> Know yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if everybody else around you is not um really participating and you know, so you know, it's a double edged sword, right? But um my mom I, she really didn't want me to go back for real. Okay. No. I mean, I think a lot of times it does put a lot of stress on our relationship. And she doesn't like how, you know, she's portrayed on the show. And then people don't understand, like, just because it's a TV show to you, it's real life for us. So sure. even when the cameras are gone, we're still going through it. Like, we still, even when we make up, when the show comes back, on, when it starts airing on TV, we're, the whole family is back at odds. Mm. So it's a constant roller coaster of drama that I'm dealing with. On and off camera. Yeah. And that wasn't, I don't want to say that was necessarily the reason. You know, like I said, for me, it was just really more of a timing sure. thing. Um, but they that, just gave me too much time to think yeah. in that break. <laughs> and at that moment, I said, you know what, I'm going to try to see what I can make happen. It doesn't have as much um, stress related to it. But stress is, is a part of 
being on a docu series, I believe. I mean, how were you able to navigate that with the family? Because now and I, I don't think we'll ever do it, but you know, we do a red carpet or two, and it's always like, do you think you guys would ever do a TV show with you and your family? And I'm always my my first reaction is absolutely not because I've never seen someone successfully navigate it without it bringing in drama that wouldn't otherwise be there. You know, mm-hmm. I would be afraid of it having a negative effect on my relationship. And yet, for the most part, you've successfully been able to do that. Like, how would someone, not that we're trying to do it, but how would someone, if I if, if I got present, if we got presented an opportunity and I was like, all right, I got to call Candy and find I out. I think like, it'll be harder for you than me. Two reasons. And man, Todd, we've talked about this before because people were like, how is it that your relationship still last through it with all the drama that you guys have been in. I think for a lot of people that come on the show, right, they come on the show as a couple, right? And they come on Mm -hmm. having already been living their life one way. And then when they get in front of the world and, you know, obviously, you know, where these housewives now are celebrities. Yeah. And that changes things, the the dynamic of the relationship. (laughs) And it's like in all of a sudden, it's like, Things that you wouldn't have to be dealing with, I guess, as a husband. Now you're dealing with as a wife. You're like, I'm not putting up with this shit because I don't have to. Yeah. You know, do you yeah. see all these people loving me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It becomes a different for thing sure. for them. But in my situation with my husband, we met um, after I was already doing the yeah. show. So our lives from the beginning were already a part of the TV situation. That makes sense. And Todd, he had already been behind the scenes in TV, so he already knows how a lot of this works with the show. You know what I mean? So despite your success, you're the exception, not the rule. Yeah, Yeah. I'm definitely not the rule. And I, and I, like I said, and I think it's mainly because if you're a couple and you had one life that was fine and you didn't have all these people with opinions talking about you every day, you could deal with things differently. Mm -hmm. But if you get thrown out there in front of the world, now everybody's in your business. Everybody has an opinion. And even though a lot of people say, oh, I don't care what people think. If you got constantly you seeing all of that negativity about your husband, you know, things about your like people, especially to me, I think sometimes on these shows, the women get really evil with each other and they will blast things about your significant other to the world that mm-hmm. you didn't even know. You sitting there looking like, wait a minute. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And having to deal with all of this as it plays out in front of the world, yeah. that's not easy. And sometimes it doesn't even seem to be true accusations. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't even. Ha- yeah, exactly. Yeah. They don't even care about an accusation being true just as long as they look like they read you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of, <laughs> how, like, what? how are the things with you and um phaedra and portia i know oh my God. i thought you said you didn't watch the show that long <laughs> i do my research that was a long yeah. time ago well yeah. i just when, when doing my research justin uh is uh, our, our big he worked for bravo i did intern. yeah in a past uh, life in a past, really? life. past life and i was i was alarmed by that story yeah, I, it was terrible ter- yes i mean it from what i understood it seemed like you've always been so you know open you got your sex toy company you're very sex positive and it seemed like these insane and dangerous accusations were thrown your way without a shred of proof right (laughs) i mean but then you know i i keep a receipt honey i'm about to hit you hit you with the receipt oh yeah yeah that was the best when you brought up those text messages (laughs) well because i had to to defend myself like normally i don't like if we have any private conversations like right. I, that it, and that's the whole thing you, to navigate your friendships if you try to maintain a real friendship on camera and off you know like you know how you get figure out what can you say on camera versus off if camera. it happened like uh, not filming right. how to bring yeah, yeah, yeah so that always became a problem but to go back to what you were saying over time Portia and I have gotten into a better place. Okay. And I think um, because we have a mutual friend, Shamia, and even at times when I didn't really want to talk or like, like, girl, bye. You know, Shamia would be like, y'all need to talk. Y'all need to be like, it was a not on camera, mind you, off camera. 
you know, just bringing us around mm-hmm. each other. And, you know, and then plus she was still on the show after that year. So even though I the first year after it, season after that happened, at first I was like, I'm never talking to her again. <laughs> I mean, I. <laughs> but she's funny. And it's hard Damn to be it. around you. Like, now I'm forced to be around you still. And she's making me laugh. Did you ever get. Like, why am I laughing? I don't like you. You're not fucking funny. You're not fucking funny. Did you, ever... Fucking funny. Did you no. ever get a sincere, heartfelt apology about that whole thing? No. Portia has apologized. Okay. Phaedra? Has not. <gasps> Really? Where do you think it, where do you think I the whole thing I originated have. from? Huh. Do you think it originated more from like because it was correct me if I'm wrong. It, Portia said that yeah, <laughs> but like, Portia accused Phaedra of starting out of their, it. Oh, wait, Straight. Can I curse? Oh, yes. Yeah, fuck yes. your balls. You can <laughs> yeah. Okay, you they yeah. pulled that bullshit out, out of their, their ass. ass. <laughs> Cause like, first of all, just to be clear, I have never in my life been high or drunk. In my entire life, you know, I've been around other people. I don't care what you do, but that's not my thing. So to even pretend that I would um, try to drug or do anything like that to somebody, that just was like some bullshit that somebody yeah. pulled out the back of their ass. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, I couldn't even imagine how that came together. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, of course, you know, you hear that one blame this one and this yeah, one, yeah, you know, everyone, whatever. Yeah. And at this, at this point, you know, it's been so many years past. I don't try, I don't want to like relive it or rehash it. But, you know, all I have to say towards it is it was some straight BS and it was a very low point for me to be dealing with yeah mm-hmm. i'm sorry um, to deal with it because it's that's those i mean yeah. those, it's one thing to throw shade at each other but those that yeah, that, that was, was a crossing line. a line that was yeah. cr- that crossed an entire yeah. line yeah. like a yeah an entire line and so that's why i just was like you know what um, so no accountability from pedro yet i don't even talk to her like mm-hmm. we don't communicate whatsoever and i'm fine with it being that way okay yeah. you know we don't even speak when we see each other in the streets, <laughs> you just you cross the street. Literally, we were at our, we were at a fashion show in like, Atlanta, and let's see, like you, let's say somebody was sitting there, and she she's one like, person in between y'all. Yeah, didn't speak didn't look or that look, way. Didn't even look in each other's direction. Mm. Damn. See, and I mean, I'm a Taurus. Okay, and okay. I'm a true Taurus. I will cut you off and we will never have to speak again as far as I'm concerned. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not holding grudges over here or nothing. I'm not wishing bad on her or anything. I just choose not to. You just like don't, she's not even a thought in your brain. Yeah. Oh, why would you fuck with someone like that who brought up? Except for when other people bring it up. Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, other people bring it up and then it's a conversation. But if other people don't bring it up, it's just like, I just, it's not even a... Thing. Yeah. 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 Are there any other castmates that you don't speak to anymore that maybe aren't worth it or you cut them off as well? Um, not really. I mean, I don't necessarily care for my castmates, but mm. I mean, I I don't have like an issue like that to the level of that was. Sure. So it's just like for me, it's just kind of like we just don't talk. Like I can see you keep it moving, but if you say hey, like hey and keep it pushing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 it's not like. It's it's not extra. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know you said bef- while you were figuring out if you were going back or not, they were contemplating hiring new housewives. Mm-hmm. What is that feeling when new housewives come on? Is it excitement for a new oh. or is it frustrate? Like, ugh, here we fucking go. I got to get to know like some new bitch. It's going to be like make <laughs> some drama. Um, or is it like this is going to be fun. This is going to mix it up. It's a mixture of both. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like they bring on certain people with an angle. Do mm. you have an example? Remember the year we had the 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 lingerie party and we all got into it real bad that year. Remember Christopher Williams mm-hmm. and his um, I guess his wife or fiance. She knew Todd from back in the day, and so I guess you know, like when they do these interviews. They may know 
that you know these people know oh, somebody and then yeah. they try to bring have them, them on come to... on to try to say things yeah yeah so remember she had did the thing it's like well you know he dated my I friend and he, he likes to swerve and i was like what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> me. <laughs> She's like, well, you know. You went, it was before your time. You wouldn't understand. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, like wait, huh? what? She kind of huh? came out of nowhere. That's what it was. Yeah. No, yeah. but the point was, you know, when they do stuff like that, they have them bring this thing, these things up. You know, they brought that person yeah. on the show to do that. To do that because they knew that they knew you. Or even like, was it um the cookie lady or somebody <laughs> remember that year yeah when, i think so yeah i can't remember wh whose husband she had some type of affiliation with somebody but it's just like they will bring people on the show like good or bad like when they interview these people they're like okay do you know any of the girls mm -hmm. what do you know about them mm -hmm. are you cool with them or are you not cool with them so when these people come on the show typically you wondering okay what is she coming on here on the yeah. show thinking that she about to beef with me? Yeah. Or is she coming yeah. on saying she's trying to be friends with me? What is happening? Yeah. It's just like one yeah. or the other. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody. you never know. Or you'd be like, oh, oh, she knows her. Okay, good. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> That's somebody from their yeah. past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Watching some of your best moments, what seemed to trigger you the most was any accusation of inauthenticity. Oh, yeah. Which I really appreciated. And I think what's made you so successful and have such a long tenure on this franchise is that you were, you were consistent. You were always you. Thank for you. good, bad, or ugly, that's who you were. And I honestly feel like that makes the best reality TV star because over time, whether people agree or disagree with you in any given moment, they know that you are being yourself, right. which isn't always the case. And I'll with a lot of reality TV personalities. Right. Who in your experience were would be the least authentic to your authenticity? Wait, what? <laughs> 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 who, who, like, who, like, who's not as, like, there's a lot of, like, least authentic. There seems to be a lot of performative <laughs> housewives, <Okay>. you know? <laughs> Can I confuse you? Sorry. Who's fake? I didn't come on here to bad mouth any of the ladies. I'm not doing that. Okay. Uh, what I will, I'll make a general statement. Okay. I'm not calling out people specific. Okay. There are, uh, Good amount of people okay. <laughs> that have been on, rea on on our show specifically or other shows sometimes, but on our show specifically where I have seen them privately and how they are with cameras. Yeah. And they be two different people. Mm -hmm. mm. And I just be like, what? You know, people really care about what the world thinks of them, right? Yes. Or, you know, it became a thing, I guess, uh, some years ago when, ev when everybody in reality started really doing stuff with brands. So everybody's like, oh, my brand. It's not good for my brand. I don't want people to think that I do this. <laughs> Speaking of, it was, who was that? I don't know what it was. It was somebody who used to say they didn't do something, but then they caught them on camera doing it or something. <laughs> It's just so many people, yeah. I feel like so many a lot people, of people, you know. Yeah. How, yeah. Do they wear shirts? They'll, they'll be like, oh, I don't smoke smoke. I don't smoke cigarettes. And then you catch Roll the tape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or either they, I never, oh, your girl that you asked me to, we did we talk. And I said, I never talk. But before she was off the show, she was like, I don't even curse. And then <laughs> Cynthia Rewind. brought out a recording of her when <laughs> she had, um, was on her, what, something she did. So it was just like, um, you know, and then when and that be that's so weird for me when I'm friends with you and I hear in on camera you're saying these things and I'm like, you are lying your ass off. And I'm like, but what how do I how do I do this? Because I don't like lying. I'm not even alive for myself. Then why I gotta lie for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's you know what that makes annoying. me think of Ooh. the um iconic clip of Andy asking Sheree, how is she by Sheree? Joggers. Oh, no, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jogger. He's like, excuse me? So he that, said, he's asking about your marriage. You're like, you were trying to help her and she was taking offense. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, summer, mid-fall, July. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they do this but all like, the time. That, that was a funny moment. Yeah. That was funny. But yeah, there are times where you just like, Really? <laughs> what you doing? What? How many times have you had an interaction with a housewife filming and you you knew they were lying and you thought to yourself, you know they're going to roll back the tape on this? Oh, 
know, that happens all the time. Yeah. All He's the like, time. you can see it in your head. What? Oh, my gosh. You know, like, last season, me and Drew fell out bad at the, at the reunion. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I still like Drew, even though we fell out bad. But, um... Man, she they she definitely had that that beautiful bean footage rolled back on her. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. It's just so funny to me because I've been thinking like, don't you know they gonna play? Have, you ever, do have this. you ever yeah. said it in real time? Just be like, you know, there's gonna be no. Tape. I who did I one time somebody said I said, you know they're gonna roll that back. Right? They're gonna roll the tape. <laughs> they're gonna roll that back. <laughs> Black <Okay>. and white. <laughs> they gonna roll this back yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Just just you know, okay. Mm-hmm. You keep on. Keep on. <laughs> uh, I know you don't watch a lot of the shows, but you've seen the clips. Have, have you been paying any attention about what's gone down uh, at Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and everything with Monica? Because she's made a lot of waves. And No, what happened? <gasps> no. Okay. Well, yeah. No, nah, I'm sorry. That's one I, I have not watched. Watch. Well, the only reason I asked, well, she basically was accused of kind of infiltrating their world. Like she ran a, like a troll account. Oh, oh, okay. I thought I, I think I saw the yes. clip online. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And then people thought that production brought her on brought to her like on. start drama. Which oh, I I be, I don't believe that they did. I But she really had a troll account. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. For real. yes. And a lot of fans are I I'm shockingly supporting her and I I Why was Why are they supporting her? Well, she's good TV. Okay. So she, they're The season was carried by her. Yeah. yeah. She was a one and done. Yeah. And she she was the season, but they knew when the season wrapped, she was going to be done. So that's why I say, like, they squeezed the juice out of Monica, knowing that she was going to be one and done. Because what she did to me was unforgivable because mm-hmm. it's like, it's such a violation of, of trust. And I was just curious if you had any opinions on that. Like, if imagine them casting a housewife on Real House of, well, of Atlanta and only to find out this person. And, you know, I'm sure you're aware of many troll accounts that have talked a bunch of nasty shit about you and your friends. Mm -hmm. And to find out that that person got casted after the fact. And spent, went on trips. I mean, like, got buddy-buddy, got close with you. How how would the production know that she had was running a troll account. She claims she said it in her interviews yeah. for casting. She, but she's claimed a lot of things. But, she's been caught up in many of lies. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's like, I feel like whenever people get caught in some BS on these shows, they always want to blame production. Someone, right? yeah, yeah. But typically, this is my opinion. Production, they do things that they want to happen to be so you can find out on camera. It mm-hmm. doesn't do them any good if you find out off camera or they didn't catch it in the act. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so if they literally knew that she had a um a blogger account, that would have been part of her story. That's you get what, what I'm said. saying? Yeah. So yeah. and you work with yeah. brothers, so you kinda get what I'm saying. A little bit. Like yeah. people it does it doesn't do them any good to have a secret story that never made TV. Well, it, it so, only made TV in the finale. Yeah. So it, she lasted the entire Because one of the series. other girls we'll found out, out and put yeah. her on yeah. blast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Once they mm-hmm. found out, they allowed that to be seen. Right. But what I'm saying is if they knew from the jump that she had this, that would have been a part of her story from the jump. Yeah. And so that's why I personally, I feel like I've been doing this long enough to know and I've seen enough people lie on production when they blatantly was doing some BS and then they always want to come up with these lame excuses and want to blame production and come up with these marvelous stories. And it'd be like, at the end of the day, what you can see and find to be true in most of television, even when somebody is doing something that's totally effed up, if production knows about it, they're going to follow the story. That's the only way it really benefits Mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Because it doesn't benefit them if they're not catching it. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And I just don't think it's, I don't feel like they need to go that far to make the TV that they're mm-hmm. making. It just, it, to just me, it doesn't, it doesn't we, add up. That and they we have that. enough people that are out here being complete jackasses like she was that don't mind making fools of themselves and getting caught out yeah. there. It's like, to me, you can only put on a facade for so long before it comes to light. Because the thing about you doing TV, right? You always have secret enemies who send stuff in to the other girls about you, who send stuff in to production about you. Because even though you think that you are sharing secrets with your friend, for some reason, either they're telling their friend and their friend is telling somebody else. Somebody's like the girls. We always get 
a secret DM from somebody with information about other people on the show and stuff like that. So my point is, even if somehow the information got back, how did it get back anyway? Heather Gay, he- Heather her, Gay found out. her hairstylist was best friends with the housewife. Exactly. And, so there's because the, it be, the hairstylist, they know all the tea, mm-hmm. honey. That's what I'm saying. Somebody she's talking to is talking to somebody mm-hmm. else and it always gets back like that. And so, and that's what I'm saying. So like on these shows, if you're doing some BS that you think you are keeping a secret, it's never a secret. It's eventually, it comes back around. Yeah. Monica, I feel is like, is the first one who got exposed as someone who was behind Trill Accounts. But to be honest, I, I feel like it's probably happened before. But is she the first one to get exposed for a Trill Account? Because then they also exposed the other lady that was buying, paying for the bots that were attacking um, Garcelle's family. Diana Jenkins. Oh, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like proved, but it was alleged. But allegedly. But I, 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 yeah. I think it happens on a lot of, sh- I, I think a lot of Bachelor uh, people run troll accounts. I, I think. I even, think a lot of them do yeah. because listen, I did not realize how many people have what they say uh, instas. Uh, yes, yeah. mm-hmm. and so and and this is when I realize it be happening. Right when you find this is what I every time I have somebody come on my page and they come on like really going hard for a particular person. Like, you'll see multiple people going hard for right. this particular person, right? Yeah, yeah, And, like, coming at you with the BS. If you go to that page, that page doesn't have any Zero followers. followers. No pictures. Mm-hmm. And haven't been up for that long. They're lurking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're just yeah. like, oh, so you just made this page so you can come on here. They're really... Uh, hype up yourself. Yes. Yeah. This uh, is you. I think it happens a, a lot more than people realize. Right. Yeah. So you kind of know when it's, it's, so I just block, delete. I don't even give them any like action, but I hate when I go on a blog and see those pages doing it because they basically, they sway the people's opinion yep. by having like a whole bunch of those pages and commenting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, yeah, you see everybody saying that. No, did you really go look at those pages? Just that. Yeah. Those it's like five pages. people you know, being really loud. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I mean, on the flip of that, you're known to like celebrate your fan accounts, which I think is a very like big and like oh, respectful thing. Because you've taken them to like dinners and like wine and dine yeah. them. I think it's important. Yeah. Because those are the people that really go hard for us. So especially for me, because I get a lot of hate. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of love. But, but the funny thing that I find, like, especially on the show, everybody's like, oh, Kenny thinks. What did you say about me last year? She thinks because she has all her fans and everybody's scared of her. I said, I was in my mind. I was like, are you serious? Are you saying people yeah. are scared of me because of Instagram pages? <laughs> yeah. Really? I just thought that was so funny. But, you know, if you have really true supporters, I feel like you should show them love. And that's just my opinion. Yeah. I mean, other housewives aren't doing it. So you have the blueprint. Well, maybe they thanks, should. Thanks, but I wasn't thinking that. Maybe they should. <laughs> If you could be a part of any other Housewife franchise, was there one that would appeal to you? Um, well, she's only watched two seasons of, um, but she's familiar with them. <laughs> Jersey. I like Jersey, Jersey girls. Yeah, because mind you, we all see each other. Mm-hmm. So I really love the Jersey girls, and we do have an apartment in Jersey. Oh, <laughs> no, I like those girls. <laughs> could you imagine that crossover? I feel like I'm done with Atlanta and then you pop up on Jersey. I mean, the only reason why I was saying that is because I'm there in New York a lot and Jersey is right there. No, of course, um, of course. And then LA, I come out here for work. So maybe like the Beverly Hills. Hills. Yeah. Oh, I like to see you on Beverly Hills. I I don't know, but I don't know. Just because I, I know I could do other work while I'm there. (laughs) <laughs> it's all about productive the uh, you've already- I mean I can't just sit around <laughs> yeah. and wait on them to call me that's all day. true uh, you've already won a Grammy mm-hmm. in the EGOT portfolio what's uh, what's another award that you would love to put on your mantle you know I want the entire EGOT I've said it everywhere like this is no secret I want the EGOT okay. so oh. I have the G I need the EOT last year I was nominated for a Tony and I was nominated for an Emmy. And uh, we didn't get him. But the nominations that's, that's meant good. a lot yeah. to me. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, I, mean, I haven't been nominated for any of them. So, <laughs> yeah. so I was like. I haven't um, even been invited to the show. <laughs> yeah. So my dream is to win all of them. And basically every year I go after it. Like right now we have um, 
The Wiz that is going to Broadway on March 29th. We did the whole tour, great mm-hmm. reviews. I'm just trying to keep that momentum going, praying that, you mm-hmm. know, they will secure the tea. <laughs> they will. <laughs> they got to secure the tea, okay? And I think that's like one of the hardest ones to get, really. So I'm, I'm really diligently going after it. So right now, for the foreseeable future, we're going to be going after the ECOT. We're going to be working on music, scripted, television, acting. Yes. We're going to stay away from reality TV. What are the most, well, being talent on reality TV. But like, what about like something like, like Traitors? Movies. You know, they asked me to do Traitors. I'm sure they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and you know, I said and she is doing well, I which is probably not surprising. I, I, it not surprising at all because <laughs> you, you know, you have, and she's a, she's a, she's a traitor. Listen, I don't understand how they don't guess that. I haven't watched the show, <laughs> but as soon as I got there, she would have been my vote, <laughs> my number one. <laughs> she would have been my vote. Now, um, yeah, I'm so glad I didn't do it because they don't tell you who else is gonna be no, no, there. No, no. Yeah, we, we we it would have been a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, Sheree is there too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. She's pretty quiet though. Mm-hmm. She's you kind of forget she's there. Well, damn. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, she's sneak. Well, that maybe that's part of her plan. She's kind of flying under the radar. That yeah. could be good. Yeah. Well, she's and, and she is still there. Exactly. So was, I, you know what? I haven't watched it. I said that. I need to watch it just so I can see what it's about. It's pretty good. You know, a lot of people yeah. like it. I yeah, know it's fun. It's it's fun because it's a show where they're saying, they're giving you permission. You know, it's like we're playing a game of Clue. We're playing, you know, and we're giving you all permission to lie, cheat, deceive each other. And we're used to watching these reality TV stars uh, in these environments where we're wondering if they're being authentic and we're wondering if they're lying and being deceitful. And now you get to see who's really good at it. You know, and it's kind of fascinating to see, like, <laughs> like your girl, like not your girl Phaedra, but Phaedra, who is like she's quite good at lying. Uh, <laughs> you said that I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that's like objectively true when you're watching Traders. Like she is crushing I, it in the deceit ap- department. Um, uh, no comment. No. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> What a classy lady. <laughs> no yeah. comment. No Would you do comment. a game show? Because I feel like you'd have a good poker face. You said one? Like a, a game, game show, show. Or like a like Traders is like a game show, like our competition. Oh, well, you know, I did Celebrity Big Brother. Mm-hmm. I made it all the way to the end. Mass Singer too, win. right? I won Mass Singer. There you go. And you won Mass Singer? I, yes, I did. Damn. First woman to win. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity Big Brother was the hardest show that, that I've ever done. And it's because... Having to be, you know, they take away your phone, you don't have any, like, connection to the outside world. And I was in there for, what, like, five, six weeks or whatever. And I just felt, like, when I got got out of there, I just felt so detached oh, and so, yeah. like, weird. Yeah. Like, I just felt like I was lost for, like, a good few weeks. And the, weird, and the funny thing is, Cynthia, she did the show, too, and she said the same thing. It's like... Once you are away for so long, it's like it's almost weird. That is a long time to be off if the you grid. make it all the way grid, to the end. Yeah, but, you know she did too. Um, so it's just kind of like mm-hmm. awkward. You Special know. Forces? Would you? Use- Hell no. <laughs> uh, Kenya did that show, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's too much work. I I don't have. Yeah, I got. She did pretty well gym. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know she's competitive. And she, like, you know, she works out more than me, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Did it feel different to be on a live reality show versus something that's filmed and then released later? Yeah, it, it, it was definitely weird because I basically feel like I missed that whole, you know, like I said, six weeks of what was happening in the world. You don't know what's happening, period. Like, you know how they had to that's tell great. us who yeah. won the Super Bowl and stuff like that? <gasps> I like. Mm-hmm. I felt like, okay, so for instance, I had like this really dope business plan that I was working on before I found out that I was going in there. And I, you know, me and my partners that we was going to be working on it with, we had all the stuff planned. We was about to do this. We were about to do that. So I was all excited. I go into the house and I'm like, yeah, the whole time I'm in there, yeah, I'm like, yeah, by the time I get out, we're making money and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. I came out, nothing was happening. 
They were like, we're waiting on you. had fell apart. <gasps> and I was like, what? Like, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Like, what? Why did this fall apart? And it just was like so disappointing to me. Yeah, that's and like all you've been thinking of. Yeah, I had been thinking of it. It had me going the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I was like, ooh, I can't wait to get home. Like, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. But it's just, I don't know. It just, that was just one of a few things that were like, you know, it just felt so awkward. Yeah, I bet. And like, I, and, and also to be in the house where everybody is turning on each other. You know, it's like, it's one thing to be on a show with the housewives and everybody's turning on each other. But at least I get to go home and talk to my husband about it. I talk yeah. to my mom and my friends. Mm-hmm. But okay. I literally have to be stuck in this house and I can't leave these Trapped. people. Would you do it again or no? I, I did it. It makes it, uh, it makes it to where it's a harder decision to make. Right. Where at first, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, this, this could be fun. Yeah, this could be fun. Let's go yeah. and do it. And everybody thought that I would, you know, my whole family was like, oh, yeah, she's probably going to be out of there in about two weeks yeah. or a week or whatever. Just everybody was like, just stay long enough. To yeah, 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 You went the first one. My family, just don't be the first one kick okay. off. That Maybe was last the, the thing. Whole time. Yeah, I was like, man. Yeah, you never want to be first. Yeah, you never yeah. want to be first. Do you have um, a moment in your tenure as a housewife that uh, you are like maybe most proud of where you felt like, yeah, I really, I don't know, the way you handled the situation or crushed the scene? And on the flip mm-hmm. side, are, is there a moment or two where you could wish you could have like a take back, you know, Ooh. where you wish that maybe, you know, there's a little bit regret behind maybe your authenticity or you wish you could have been left on, unsaid, <laughs> you know? I think I'm very, I've been... The one thing that I can say for myself, that I was true to who I am throughout. Mm -hmm. Like it or hate it, love it or hate it, you know, I don't care what people think. I know everything I said, I stood by it. You know what I mean? So to go to the better side of it, I think um, there were so many great moments, I think. I mean... Showing my journey of IVF Mm -hmm. when we were trying to get pregnant. I felt like I had so many people to reach out to me at that time to say how, you know, they related to what I was dealing with and it made them more open to look at the other options. And then the surrogacy surrogacy choice, um, you know, people seeing that journey, I felt like that helped a lot of people. I hate a lot of the drama with my family having to be dragged <laughs> but i mean it was relatable to so many because a lot of people deal with sure. that everyone you know everyone's got so, family drama you know it is it is whatever what it is with that um the whole thing with uh me and and phaedra and Porsche, to me that was like my lowest point sure. um just because i would have never expected that to happen in a million years like with us like never so that was like Milo. Sure. But everything else, it was just drama. It was stressful, but, you know, it was able to get past. And I think also the the building businesses and and showing that you can make it happen, I think, has been a great thing for me as far as um, motivating other people who are watching the show. What do you think has made you the most successful housewife? Just, you know, I just... Really, I don't in mind investing in my team. That's one thing. A lot of these girls, they don't want to spend money on on their stuff. Like they just want everything for free. Yeah, they want somebody to come help them figure it out for free. Yeah, they don't want to pay people. They like, just want to tag them in a post. Yeah, like it's yeah. like what are you talking You're about? Yeah, like I can tag you. Yeah. yeah, nah, it doesn't work like that. So you really have to be willing to invest in yourself, mm-hmm. um, in your business or whatever, in order to make it successful. I bet on me every time, so I don't mind putting money into what I'm doing because I know I'm going to get it back in the end. I think that's a big difference <laughs> to start with. We can yeah. start on that. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. great advice. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, you know, you can't do everything by yourself. And if you want to like, especially if you want to have like a product or something like that, it costs money mm-hmm. and you want quality stuff. You know, you can't just. Unless, you know, some people just want to slap their sticker on a box that was already done. And that, if that's what you want to do, that's cool, too. But you still need to, mar- you know, market. You still yeah. need to ha- have people that help you do that. 
Oh, what other questions do we have for Candy? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you so you had a child from IVF yes. and a child from surrog- surrogacy. Mm-hmm. Both extremely hard in their own ways. My sister uh, had a child through IVF and struggled and struggled and struggled and has not been successful mm. uh, since. I th- I feel like a lot of any this is even like my fear of surrogacy is like. I've carried my first child. Mm-hmm. You've carried a child. That connection with that child from surrogacy, is it as strong yeah. as you? it is? <laughs> it's still the I same. feel like there's a fear of like, I didn't carry this child. So like, mm-hmm. I don't feel as connected. I know Khloe Kardashian kind of went through this with her second oh, really? child. Yeah. She was like, I just don't feel as connected to him. Mm-hmm. I feel like I don't like really know him because she didn't carry him. Did you struggle with that at all? Or were you like, no. this is my baby? Uh, yeah, this I was is, like, this is I'm my good. baby, period. <laughs> um, no, I mean, but I... Okay, so first of all, Ace and Blaze, they are from the same batch of eggs okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> okay. that I did the IVF for. Yeah. So, and you know, with Ace, you know, we used two of them. I, I ended up with four, what they say, viable yeah. Good yeah. embryos. Yeah. So two we put in. I got ace because mm-hmm. only one took. took. Yeah. And then um, it was high risk. So the second time, next time we tried, the Todd said, we're not leaving any of them behind. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we use used them all. <laughs> the last two in, um, with our surrogate and one came took. through. Yeah. Well, actually, both of them took. But then what they call it, like a disappearing twin where at first oh, they showed two. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. So I was very disappointed. But then I was happy that we still got Had one. One. Mm-hmm. And um, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't see it any different. Like, yeah. that's my baby girl. Yeah. She's a handful, though. Yeah. She's really? fire. Blaze is the perfect name for her. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, what advice would you have for anyone going through the surrogacy process? Good um, or bad? I always tell people, if you're thinking about surrogacy, you need to start doing the research and all of that today. Like, don't just keep saying, oh, you know, thinking about it because by the time you actually make the move it's such a long process process before you even get to the part about you know what is the process well i know for me i had secured an attorney in um georgia but they walked me through the whole process because there are so many questions that you have to deal with like you have to go to counseling with the person before you even start you know, like yeah. agree, right? Sure. And I, didn't, it was so many questions that they asked that I wasn't even thinking about. You know, like it's the rule is my baby, but your body. So if something happens during the course of that, they really get to make the decisions. And that's scary when yeah. you think about yeah. it. It was just a lot that, you know, I learned during the process. But like I said, having someone who's already carried before four versus a first time carrier. Mm hmm. You know, where are you going to find, you know, all of that. So anyway, right. the lawyer that um we had found, she really took us through a lot of the process and told us, you know, the right steps to take. And then we had a surrogate who had already done it before. So oh, she really nice. best. Yeah. Yes. And J- Dr. Jackie introduced us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shout Jackie. Out. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Shout out to Shadina. <laughs> but yeah. That's great. Do you keep that relationship with that surrogate or no? Yeah, we're still you cool. Do. I didn't know if it's yeah, like we still a... follow each other on Instagram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she know. actually, I mean, this, some people thought this was weird, but she carried again for my friend, yeah. um, Shamia. I don't no. think, why would people think that's weird? Well, I don't know. You know, some people were just like, so you and Candy got the same... Baby, so they're like, mama? what? I, mean, <laughs> I was like, first of all, it's our baby. When you put okay. it like that, <laughs> she was our carrier. Yeah, that would, but um, if you ever want a recommendation, right, you want a recommendation yeah. for this. Right. Why would you want to go with someone, right, like that right. you aren't familiar with? So anyway, um, but it was a lot that had happened. Um, well, they were public about it, so I guess I can say. But um, Shadina, um, she ended up. Um, having breast cancer during the course of the pregnancy. 
So it was just, a, you know, an emotional time yeah. for all of us, you oh know. But she's good now. Okay. She's good. Thank God. She's good. Thank thank God. And everything, you know, worked out. But, yeah. um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. No, no, totally. I just didn't know if it's like, or if it's up to you, if that, that cord is cut and you're like, you know. You- it is up to you. Everybody's different. Some people don't even want to know their surrogate. Oh, wow. So some people keep it totally hmm. between the relationship between the, either their agency or, or attorney. Oh, Lord, yeah. And, or, you know, so, and the doctor. Mm-hmm. So sometimes when the surrogate has the baby, they never even know who they're caring for. Which wow. I think is kind of weird because I'm like, what if the world is ending? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just get a notice. I need her to know I'm coming for my <laughs> I'm baby. Coming. Like, where you at? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, people have different, you know, levels of privacy. Right, right, right. What they're comfortable they with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. That makes sense. We actually had a, a caller not too long ago who uh, called in a couple years back mm-hmm. getting some advice because she couldn't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then followed up with us because they did surrogacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, her surrogate got pregnant. Mm-hmm. Then God came and she got pregnant. Oh, wow. And then her surrogate and her had the babies on the same day. What? Yeah. So she technically had like fraternal twins. Yeah. 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 That is awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. One boy, one girl. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's such a fascinating concept that like sometimes I, you hear about the surrogacy process and it seems almost like this is a thing. This this is a thing that people do. So it's it's very fascinating to hear people's stories, and I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, yeah it's been great. That's pretty cool. I yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. All right, it's time for texting office hours. How's it going? Hi, I'm Bridget. I'm 32 years old, and I cut my best friend of 10 years out of my life two years ago, and I'm thinking about texting her to invite her to my wedding. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, let's start with why we cut her off in the first place. Yeah, a bit of a long story, but I will try to give the cliff notes. So she and I had been inseparable, best friends, lived together multiple times, kind of traveled multiple different places, lived out west, lived out east. And she got married and through our friendship. And I had always kind of been that friend who was a little bit more of a wandering, lost soul, you might say. And she kind of was always the one who had her life together. She'd been with her partner since 18. and was getting married. I was there through all of that, but I was always, you know, multiple partners, never really could figure out my job life or my my relationship life. And, you know, as your 20 something life, in my opinion, should be. Fast forward, we went traveling together, me, her and her partner. There'd always been personality differences. Like she was a little quite blunt. She grew up with a sister. They're used to fighting with each other. And I'm just not like that. I'm very bad at confrontation. So it was kind of always Anytime there was a problem with me, she would have her say, I would apologize and and that would be what it was. And then when we went overseas, that's really what it was again. And she always would kind of make me the brunt of the joke or anytime we'd be in a group setting, she would make fun of me or put me down just, you know, to rise the group up. And so after our trip there, I took a little bit of time away. We talked it out. She apologized. We moved past it. Fast forward a couple of years later in COVID, I made the move out West. I'm originally from the East and life really kind of fell into place for me. That's when I got a new job. I was incredibly happy. I met a partner about six months after moving there and I could not wait for her as my best friend to come and move out West. At the same time, she was going through a divorce of that partner that she'd been with forever. She was definitely in a darker place of life and going through a lot, but was messaging me and could not wait to come and visit, could not wait to come and see me. And could, I was like, can't wait for you to meet my partner. And I was like, what do you want to do? And I made this entire itinerary. She said she really just wanted to be around people. She'd been in the East during COVID. Everything was fully locked down. So I made everything kind of in the way that she wanted to be around people, meet my new friends, be in a group. She came out and, and the first three days we spent just the two of us. It was amazing. Then she met my partner. I was like, look, like this is my person. I've never felt this way. It's only been two and a half months, but this is my person. I am going to end up with him. I've never been this strongly about something. And immediately just started cutting that down, saying how, oh, sure, Bridget, you've always been with people like that. You've always said that. I was like, no, no, like this is different. And then as soon as she met him, everything flipped. Her, her entire personality, she was so miserable. She was on her phone the entire time. 
didn't engage with him, didn't engage with our friends. I had planned this entire itinerary. Then she got angry with me about the fact that we were only with friends and there wasn't enough alone time. And long story short, it was just, it was quite a miserable experience. My partner was like, oh my God, this is your best friend. And for me, we'd been together two and a half months. And I was like, oh, he's going to leave me because he's going <laughs> to think I have horrible friends in my life. And this is the first he'd met of my East Coast friends. And when I brought it up to her, she was like, I don't give a fuck about his friends or him like I came to see you and you only and you're not even giving me the time of day and on the last night even I planned like a final good night party with my family that she knows and she booked a hotel and had booked an uber to go there and hadn't even told me and I only found out because I was like okay we're on our way to the beach and she's like oh actually no I'm I'm leaving and so I made her cancel the uber and I drove her to the airport I was trying to talk things out with her and just wouldn't. And the whole time she was, again, putting me down, making fun of me in front of my partner, saying all these exacerbating things about me that weren't even really true. And my partner was like, that is not the Sam that I know. But again, two and a half months. Um, and basically made me feel like I wasn't taking her into consideration after all. And, and that was kind of the final straw for me. And I left it after that week saying, I'm going to see what she does, because mm-hmm. I, I do think I'm owed an apology. And it just never came. And I just, I didn't feel like I was in the wrong enough to be the one to once again in our friendship initiate an apology when I felt so confidently that I wasn't in the right. But then fast forward to now, we're now engaged with that partner that I had said was my person. We're getting married in the fall. But it's all of these things that her and I talked about for a decade that I'd been a part of for her. And I'm a massive Real Housewives fan. And so when watching Real Housewives, I'm watching them forgive each other over all this crazy shit that they do to each other. And they have this re- <laughs> like re- recurring nightmare of, did I leave her in her lowest time of life? And am I not forgiving her and being there for someone when they're in like the worst stage of their life? And that's kind of where I'm at today. I feel like she should be a part of this and she isn't. And it just makes me sad. Okay. Some of the real housewives, we never forgive each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, fair. I'm, I'm talking mainly OC, like Shannon, Vicky, the shit they do to each other and what they've gotten through. I'm just like, oh my God, if they can forgive that, like, am I being a bad friend? Bye. Some of them not. only forgive because they're stuck on the show together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what my partner says. But... You have a choice. But go ahead. <laughs> what, is, uh, yeah, what is your partner? Well, how does he feel about it? He was really unimpressed by her, but (laughs) he saw her at the lowest part of her life, right? And I I think she's one of those people who had not really been through much horrible experiences. And everyone's worst experience is their worst experience. I'm not discounting that. Like, if your dog died, that's the worst thing. That's your worst thing. But she had never had to get over something the way that she was going through with the divorce. I got a question for you. As re- you reflect back on the relationship, the friendship, you know, a recurring theme that you kept bringing up is that, you know, for much of this relationship, she had her shit together and you were kind of the free spirit and you made mistakes here, there, blah, 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 blah. And she seemed to really remind you of that on a regular basis. And there are a lot of friendships out there that have a dynamic like that, where they're friends because one person's there to make the other person feel better about themselves. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you look back on this friendship, like, was that always your friendship? You know, was she always there to like point out your faults, remind people when you make mistakes? And yeah, she was going through the lowest part of her life. But once again, did she like come, you know, it's like she almost like came out to feel good about herself. And yet here you are meeting this new guy, having friends, having success, and you weren't able to give her what she was used to receiving from you, which is to feel good about herself. And I'm just wondering, is there, is there happier moments that maybe you're not speaking to uh, of that friendship where, you know, what are you, I guess it's, my question is, what are you trying to bring back into your life? No, that's a that's a great question. And 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 that's the thing. I'm like, we we only have a limited amount of time. So I can't go through 10, 10 years of an amazing. Yeah, I don't need every example, but like that's just you can answer that For question sure. is like, what yeah. is what as a friend would she be bringing to you if she were yeah. to reenter your life? Because it doesn't sound like you need someone who's there to like jab at you, mm-hmm. make make comments, remind you that you've been a fuck up. You know, and like, <laughs> yeah. listen, I've 
I got some, you know, my guy friends, you know, I, I have a couple friends I've been friends with since high school. You know, I have friends I've made throughout my life. But like, you know, sometimes when you have old friends, I've had had a couple moments with friends where like they bring up, sh like we were, I was like in my late 20s <laughs> and they would like bring up shit from high school and I'd be like, dude, what the fuck? Right. It, I, are we, I, it's over. And like, you know, at that moment, my, my, my buddy was like, yeah, you're right. I'm, man, I'm sorry, man. I don't know why I did that shit. So like, if she's open to receiving that, fine. But I guess, the, again, the big question is, it's not so much like, it's not about whether you're a bad friend or a good friend. It's like you're an adult now. People outgrow friends all the time. Yeah. You're not who you were 10 years ago. You don't owe the friendship anything. And so the big question is, do you think she's capable of being a good friend to you now? Because who gives a shit about what promises you guys made to each other when you were 20? Right. I do have a question, though. Um, in this time that you guys haven't really been communicating, has she been reaching out to you? No. So... There was two times, one weird Facebook update, I think that happened where they were sending text messages when people would post mm. something. Mm -hmm. And so it texted me that she had posted something, but it came through of like, this person wants to share this with you. So I sent back to her and saying, Hey, was this on purpose? So I thought maybe it was a weird, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. passive. Like, passive aggressive yeah. way of connecting mm -hmm. with me. And she just responded, no, period. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of our really good friends who we had lived with when we had moved out west together had passed away a year and a half ago. And she messaged saying, hey, this person died in case you didn't know, period, which I, I had already known, thank goodness, because that's not the most. It just I feel like that's my thing. And that's what my partner says. And what I, what I say to him is. If I were to let her back in my life, and don't get me wrong, there was 10 years of amazing friendship. And that's why I'm even, this is even weighing on me. If she had been a shit friend that whole time, I have enough good friends. I don't need that. But she's definitely been one of my longest friends because I am not someone who holds on to people who don't bring me joy. And she brought me a lot of joy, but I would need to see changes. And that was the thing is I feel as though she was that person going through her divorce where she just thought time would heal wounds. But I, through my life have known like you need to put the work in if you're going through something and you're unhappy and you want to get past it you have to make actionable choices to get past it and I felt like she wasn't doing that and then was taking it out on me on that trip and I was just I'm hoping and praying that she's done the work now it's been two years but yeah. I don't want her in my life and don't want her there if that's what it's going to be I just at the same time like do I make that first move because it's kind of that thing like a wedding is something you can't really redo or come back from and you know okay can i just say something your answer is no and if you want to reconnect with her reconnect with her after the wedding because see i can already tell right now you're going to be thinking so much about fixing things with her that's going to be taken away from your wedding experience and this is a rule of thumb in any relationship whether it's the person you're with dating relationship or friendship he who cares the least about keeping the relationship is the one who controls it. She has not called you. She does not. She has not showed you any care or concern. She's not reached out. She's not you're like, oh, let's reconnect. She's not giving you anything. So basically, you are constantly thinking about her, trying to figure out how to make it right with her. And then at the same time, you're telling us, but she has to do the work. She's not trying to do any work. She controls that friendship. From what you described, she's been controlling that friendship. And what you need to do is understand that the ball is in her court. She controls it. So even if she does you wrong. So what I mean by this is, have you ever seen a person date somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'd be like, you know, or he's, they, or let's say I'm in a relationship and this person's doing me wrong. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm leaving. All that person has to say is, you know what? You're right. I'm doing wrong. And, um, you know, let's just go ahead and take this break. You know what? People who, are needy do they do no 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 let's talk about this we need some closure we need to have this we need to figure out what's going wait a minute why am i saying that to them they did me wrong you know what i mean no. all they had to do was flip it on me i used to do that to dudes all the time <laughs> so, it's like because it's like even if i'm dead wrong i don't really have to apologize to you because i know as soon as i tell you you know what you're right I'm, you know, let's just take a break. You don't really want to take a break from me. So you're going to be trying to like, well, let's figure this out. Let's talk. Let's da, da, da. 
See how the mm-hmm. the power switched? Yeah. Don't let the power switch on you before your wedding, at least. Go ahead, get married. <laughs> enjoy that. Have fun. Do not make your wedding about her because that's what it would end up being. Lord forbid she comes and makes stupid jokes about you, you know, during the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you're getting married. Like, that would all it take to ruin your day. Oh, my God. Look at you in that dress. Oh, girl, that's- you would have never looked like that before. If she'd say anything, it would tear up your day. Don't let anybody come at this joyous time in your life that can kind of like mess that up. You know, if, if you want to figure it out with her, I get it. You love her. You know, y'all got history. But do that after the wedding. Enjoy this moment. Take it all in. The person yeah. who It's cares, all about you right now. The person who cares the least controls the relationship. That's good. They do. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, that's, it's actually such, yeah, no, that's. Your whole like, your benchmark is your wedding date. And I get why, you know, but Candy's right. And also just to point out, just because you get married and she's not there, doesn't mean you guys can't reconcile if there's, you know, like it's just a, it's a wedding, you know? And I'm a big believer and your wedding is about the two of you. And it's nice to have friends and family there and share that occasion, but like that doesn't make or break your wedding. You know, it's just not, you don't know who's going to, Oh, for all the people you invite to your wedding, some of them might get COVID or get sick or might have to miss it. Who gives a mm-hmm. shit? Like it's that's not gonna make a difference to your wedding. And like Candy said, forget about like all all addition what she could say to you. This is a person who has a track record who could be sitting in the audience, so to speak, or at the and just be talking shit all fucking day. Right. Just like dropping little like, um, well, she was like this. When I've known her for so long and I don't know, like you know and people at weddings all the time, there's always a couple people who'd be like, I don't think it's gonna work. You know, there's always a couple of those people, you know, (laughs) you don't want that energy at your wedding. And, um, it's hard to, very, it's very hard to disagree with Candy on this. I I don't think your wedding should be what's instigating the reconciliation. Mm -mm. I think it's the milestones that surround the wedding as well, more than anything. Like you're right. I would also understand if I was in reverse situation, like that's, that would probably be very uncomfortable for her as well to come to like that big event when a lot of my friends and family know that we have not been speaking yeah. for two years. So it's not, a, it's about having her back in my life for these big monumental milestones that I feel like we're missing. And I also just worry about how she's doing because I know she was in a bad place two years ago and it, it's just tough. And all of my friends are, you know, they're my friends. And that was why yeah. I wanted to to call in and have this conversation with a very unbiased opinion, someone who does not care at all or does not know me because, they're always going to be on my side and they're always going to tell me that, you know, I'm in the right because they know my perspective and yeah. not necessarily hers. Well, minus your wedding, you know, uh, listen, if, if you want, if you're curious enough to right. reach out, reach out and see if there is change. I mean, you know, can you set a boundary? Can, can, you know, you, it, it, this is, it sounds like this is someone where the relationship, she had the power dynamic, you know, and for she whatever reason is. you felt compelled, you probably apologized to her way more than you ever should have. She would never apologize to you. And yet she was the one who was poking at you. And so it's just very easy to go back into that dynamic. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, do you have the strength to really, you know, change the dynamic of your relationship and is it really worth it and to candy's point she has not reached out you know she mm-hmm. hasn't made any attempt whatsoever and that yeah. says a lot that that says a lot i've never really thought about that the person who cares the least has and maybe she was just always the one who cared the least and like i tried so hard to immerse myself in her life and her friends and the lack of care about doing that when i was finally in a place i was proud of was just a really hard blow but I don't know. I always believe that people can change and sure. I don't know. I'm always, you know, me, I'm a big fan of like, I'll, you know, send a letter. It says, I miss our friendship. I don't like the way you treated me. Yada, yada, say your piece. And maybe, you know, I would stand your ground when you communicate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't reach out just to be like, I miss you. Definitely (laughs) not. Yeah. The you up text. Yeah. It would have to be like, listen, I miss our history, but the, you know, the reasons why I haven't reached out are X, Y, and Z, you know? Um, but here on this side, I I feel like we, we doubt her potential. She's doing, ask a mutual friend. How's she been doing? Yeah. Okay. She's good. Glad to hear that. Call her after the wedding. 
<laughs> I'm just such an advocate for direct communications. Like I don't want to do the back door. Like that just feels high. I want to, you know. But that's like, how you get, I, you end up being the one that's always taking advantage yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, she is. No, yeah, fair. she is not giving you the same consideration you're no. giving her. You're, you're it's, it's, yeah. it seems like a very one sided. Yeah, maybe she is. Like, we don't know. I haven't reached out. She hasn't, but maybe she is. But yeah, maybe. But two right. years like, isn't that great to be. Even when you mistakenly hit her, like, hey, girl, did you mean? She was like, That's no. True. No. Also, if she did the work that you're wondering if she did, I'm pretty sure she would have reached out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. And I, I appreciate the unbiased perspective, but you're probably right. <laughs> you're, you're, you're banking on a lot of hope. Yeah, I'm not, and, I, and listen, I'm not saying you can't never try to rekindle the friendship. I'm just saying wait till after the wedding, you know, because I just don't want your wedding to be about her. That's it. Yeah. I don't want that. Now, I mean, hey, if you, like I said, if you care that much about what's going on with her right now, I'm sure y'all got mutual friends. You can ask them how she been. Yeah. You know, the more I think about it, the more I agree with Candy too. Because you you started this after you told us a story. Your big question was, "Am I the bad friend?" Which is absurd hearing your story, <laughs> and yet that was your big concern. Which like there's that vulnerability that I think you could be taken advantage of by someone that you're describing, knowing that your big concern is what people think of you as a friend and that makes you vulnerable to someone like her. Yeah, no, that's fair. And it's not the first time people have said it, but it's, it's good to hear it from an outside perspective. Yeah. That's <laughs> not someone who loves me. So Cut her yeah. off. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah. There's well, not, thank you so much. not a lot of upside here. Glad mm -hmm. we could help. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, take Thank care. You. No, I like it about not making it the wedding, but yeah, I, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys. Well, congratulations on the wedding. I hope it's right. amazing. And focus on the wedding and not about any, no one else matters but you Old and your partner. Old best friends, yeah. they don't call yeah. you anymore. Yeah. Well, thank you, and good luck on your wedding as well, and, uh, and with the daughter. Thank you. I appreciate it. Time. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, Candy, <laughs> that wraps it up for us. <laughs> Shut I was like, girl, if you don't tell that lady, I see you when I see you, like, keep it pushing. You seem like someone who's very good at enforcing boundaries with everyone in your life. You know, I, no, I think the thing about me is the people who I've decided that you are going to be in my life for life, mm -hmm. if we're lifers, then I don't let anything petty get between us, whatever, whatever. We don't have to talk every day. I'm still going to be, you know, we going to pick up right where we left off. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I refuse to allow somebody to make me feel like they can just continue to walk all over me and I'm just going to take it. Yeah. And that's what she was describing to us. I was like, I don't know who or what, how you've been brought up, you know, to always be the person that accepts that. But I'm not, I wouldn't accept that. Yeah, well, that. that's what I'm saying. Sometimes people are friends because of that dynamic. And I, it sounds like that's what carried the friendship. Is Right. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Well, Candy, I really appreciate you coming on. It's Thanks been such a pleasure. Uh, again, congratulations on an incredible run as a housewife. I think Thank I speak you. for most uh, Bravo fans when we hope it's not the end, but maybe just... <laughs> A pause, and a if it's pause. not if it's not at La Atlanta, maybe there's a spinoff, or maybe it's a girls trip. You know, <laughs> maybe, girls trip. Yeah, maybe, no. maybe we'll do traders mm. together. What you and I? Uh, you know, no, terrible. How terrible long idea. are they? And that's what the thing that I, I think it's three weeks. Okay, I don't know. I'm uh, I don't know about that. But... Never know. We want to see you on TV again. <laughs> that's all. I'm well, saying. you'll see me on TV. Catch well, yeah. me on the shy. Right now, I'm on the Amazon Prime movie with Snoop Dogg called The Underdogs. Hey, you know, you can catch me on The Past, the movie that my husband and I yeah. produced. We got some more films coming this year. I got a lot of stuff going on okay. now. You will see me. <laughs> also, as, as Candy, so it's, you, were, you were an excellent housewife. Oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, and congratulations on all your success. Uh, I hope you get your EGOT. Uh, I'm rooting for you. And uh, <laughs> honestly, just congratulations on an incredible, incredible run. Thank you. Uh, thanks, you guys, for listening. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at com for all things texting office hours. Uh, Ask Nick, mediation, you know the drill. We'll see you back on Monday. You're crazy. Bye. Bye.